Welcome everybody to the H3 Podcast Live. Thank you to our sponsors today, Stitch Fix Men, Squarespace, and Bowling Branch. Today we have Bobby Lee, the hilarious and infamous uh, pants shitter. <laughs> Bobby Lee, the comedian. And comedian. <laughs> and comedian. Pants shitter. <laughs> he was on Mad TV. He has a podcast that he slams, and he's just an all-around funny, cool dude. But today, before we get into that, he's going to be joining us later. I was feeling like it's time to try a new format on the podcast here, because we've had like a ton of interviews in a row. And while I I love interviewing and spending time with guests, I feel like kind of the heart and soul of the podcast should be me complaining and Ela listening. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like there hasn't been enough of me complaining and Ela listening. Ethan is losing it. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> and so what we were thinking is that the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes should be me and Ela talking about what's going on, talking about what's, what's bothering not me, going on. what's not going on, and what's going in or out. <laughs> or out at the same time, you know? There's lots of twists and turns. <sighs> There's no coffee. There's no water on the table. <laughs> now I'm a straight up diva. Okay, I'm a pa- I'm a diva, but I'm also a patient and forgiving man. Okay, and I can only I can only tolerate so many. What did I do to reserve to deserve this disrespect? There's no glass of, of water on the table. <laughs> I'm, God, I would like a glass of water though. God, no respect in this. This is what we need 30 minutes for. <laughs> no respect. Dude. Shit. Got like a full staff of people back here. Can't even get a glass of water. What are you looking at, Shredder? <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Um, <clears throat> I don't hear water pouring. <laughs> it's on its way. It's <laughs> 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 um... So we thought it would be, we should, we should have our own thing, you know, it's, we should take the time to talk and see what's going on. Cause there's all kinds of stuff I want to talk about. So let's just get, let's just get right into it. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Oh, that's not Dan. That's Ian. You guys' beards are <laughs> hey, melding into one identity. You got a teddy bear on your shirt. Sorry to disappoint. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Brian. Bye, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> So, first of all, so yeah, Bobby Lee will be here in about 30 minutes. Looking forward to that. Our, okay, so we had a live show last month at the Improv with Post Malone. And it was, it was a ton of fun. It was so much fun. It was exhilarating. It was, it was so incredible. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, so there was 200 seats there. And the thing about the Improv is, like, there's no real green room or backstage. So you have to walk through the crowd to get there. And when we walked through, everyone was just, like, so freaking supportive and high energy. <laughs> it was incredible. You walk out, it's, like, embarrassing <laughs> in a way, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, like, everyone's, like, so hyped to see you, and like it's, like, that. me? So, our first show was a total blast. Our next live show is this month on the 26th at the Ace Theater, downtown L.A. The tickets are on sale. You can spam it. Uh, can you guys spam it? And we'll also put it in the description of YouTube. But this one's a 1700 seater at the Ace Theater. I am terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. 1700 seats, man. Last time I could barely talk. More than, like, normally I can barely talk. Right. But that was more than the normal. I think you're being hard on yourself. No. But I did find it interesting that... So Austin was like, he was telling us that he was super nervous and he's played shows way bigger than that. But I guess it's, it's different because he just goes yeah. up and he sings and he does something that he's really comfortable and used to doing. But going up in front of an audience <laughs> and like talking and shit is a whole, it's a whole different, I guess, skill, skill set. Yeah. Right? So he said he was super nervous up there too, <laughs> which I thought was cute. We were all so nervous. <laughs> Bro, I was terrified before. How, did we even talk about this? No, I don't think we did. See, that's the problem with this show. (laughs) What's the point of the podcast if I can't even talk about, like, that whole experience? So, (laughs) um, I was so, I was just shitting myself backstage as we were waiting. 
And then Austin came like two minutes before we were yeah, supposed to go Yeah, it was almost live. late and we were, we, like... we were waiting in the stairwell. <laughs> and of course, he's always on time. He's the coolest guy. He comes cruising up the stairs and we barely have enough time to snap a photo. But I'm just like, I didn't know how to describe that feeling. It's just, yeah. it's, it's excitement it's like... and nervousness and all kinds of nuts. There's like no words exactly. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm wondering, but the, the thing about the improv is that it's so intimate there that you can like see everybody's face. Like the first row, we're, we're pretty much like they're sitting right across <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, table. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I think at the um, Ace, you're not going to necessarily see everybody in there. So in a weird way, I expect it to be less stressful in that you don't feel like you're entertaining like people are like staring at you, waiting for to be entertained in a way, you know. You're just staring talking. at you, like, when is the joke coming? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're just staring almost into like a black void because the lights are so bright, you can't mm-hmm. really see anything. So that's really exciting. I'm I'm super pumped, and wh- the plan is that we want to do it every month. And I think what we want to do is at the, at the Ace every month, like a residency. So we'll do it at the our last show of every month at the Ace, and we'll put our tickets on sale for the whole year. Probably next month after we see how this one goes. If I don't tank, <laughs> if I don't bomb completely, what's the worst case scenario? Like, what would be the worst bomb? What if uh, I just walked out and broke my leg? That's what they say, break your leg. What if I just tripped and broke my leg? That won't be that bad because it's not your fault. It's, it's almost like, like <laughs> thank you, good night. <laughs> no refund. <laughs> That actually happened. I saw a conference uh, at BlizzCon. They had this is the funny shit. Ian, can you try to find that or someone back there? At BlizzCon, they have a costume competition, mm. and everyone comes out in their costumes. And someone literally came out and broke their leg and had to be really? carried off the stage. And I know it sounds tragic, but it was hilarious. <laughs> can you find it, Ian? Meanwhile, um, <coughs> I wanted to talk about our last video, Ethan's Closet, because. Corner. Ethan, see, I, <laughs> that's how much I care about it. Um, it, w- it had everyone so polarized. <laughs> it was a, it was a shitty video. I mean, I knew that. It was just a goof, right? It's funny. We actually had people unsubscribing, like, a lot from that video. It doesn't really bother me. I just find it funny that, like, years of posting content, and then all of a sudden they're like, nope. <laughs> Maybe they had it. Maybe that was it. You know what, Ethan? I've had enough with your videos. Because the uh, this is it. Goodbye I'm forever. <laughs> Goodbye forever. <laughs> Here's the video, by the way. This is important. This is more important than whatever I'm talking about. All right. Get, oh yeah, this is definitely it. Oh, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel. Where are you from? Arizona. Oh no. What's, what what is, is the obviously. costume? As good as it gets, dude. <laughs> That's what you do, Daniel. Undead male. Undead male, do it well, okay? Have at it, Daniel. Undead male. You guys are not. This is this is <laughs> this is what's gonna happen to me. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> he, he like immediately just. Oh. Get it, Daniel? <laughs> you shouldn't laugh, but I, yeah, he pretty much he sprained his ankle, or really, he's fucked up. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> he won't even attempt to stand up. He's just like, you know what? I'm done. Someone carry my ass off, and that's what happens. It's the huge security guards carry us off. <laughs> you no. Bro, you you have one good leg. Just stand up and hop off. God Christ. He's most... also super nervous. It's the most pathetic. Okay. You yeah. Okay, but I mean, you've got adrenaline. Just cop hobble off, crawl off stage. <laughs> if you have to, just get on. Just crawl out. You're in the trenches, man. There's shells falling. No, a, a he just religion. gave up. <laughs> he just gave we up have, on life. We have a broken leg. Aww. We have a broken leg here. here. (laughs) Look at this. All these guys come out and carry his ass out. Look at this. They grab him by the... This is too good. 
Have you ever seen oh, a sadder no. sight in your life? I feel so bad for him. <laughs> Look at this. He's grabbing his broken ankle. <laughs> the poor guy. <laughs> Okay. There's this moment here of like a face that you'll never forget. I saw that. Hold on, I want to capture that moment. Bad death, Lane deserves. A big round of applause for the performance. Oh, <laughs> the makeup doesn't help. <laughs> so that's the worst case scenario, pretty much. Man. I can relate. Last night I fell. Oh yeah. In our stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we moved into a new house, and, it and it's still got, hurts. It's got pretty <laughs> steep stairs, and it was. I was just standing there, and Ela was coming down the stairs. We were playing with Shredder. It's dangerous, and Ela just <laughs> ate shit like she just skipped the last stair. Yeah. And it looked weird because it looked almost like she meant to do it, but no, she ate shit hard. She tumbled. She timbered right there. Timber. <laughs> anyway. It's rough. So, I can relate. Who can relate? Who can relate? You can. <laughs> so anyway, the last video was a real shit post, and a lot of people were upset. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Which is fine. I I tried to tell you guys I was gonna post shitty videos, did I not say that? And everyone- you remember when we were like, oh, I've been depressed? Oh, I've uh, been yeah, depressed. It took a little while from that moment. Yeah, <laughs> I they think forgot. people forgot they did already. Forget. <laughs> I should have followed it up with this video. <laughs> but... You know, I just felt like posting a video. I didn't care about what it was. It wasn't, you know. But anyway, this meme was really funny on the subreddit. I love this, this family, man. The new H3's video was shit. It's the return of classic H3. It's forced and full of half-baked jokes and builds up to absolutely nothing. He is alerting people on the Facebook privacy scandal with maintaining a good balance between information and shit posting. All he did was say Facebook and AIDS 50 times. Can it be both? <laughs> I feel like it can be both. I feel like the truth is somewhere in the middle. This is, I don't know why these people... What is this from? <laughs> it's it's from, uh, Pawn... Oh, these are the... Those shows? It's called, uh, West Coast Choppers. Yeah, these are the mm -hmm. West Coast Boys. I love that... Just he's throwing a like chair. like they really capture... <laughs> yeah, the... <laughs> the feeling of those comments. Right. <laughs> like, exactly, exactly. Anyway, guys, we just posted a new video that I'm, I don't know, I'm happy with it. I like it. We're trying to get back into the swing of it. You know, that's two it's, videos this the, week. The longer you don't post, it gets harder to get back to it. Right. So we're just trying to break that. That's what that, it was. And there's like a break wall. Break the seal. Yeah. And that's what that video, Ethan's corner was. Because you just, okay, you make a video. It's not as good as you want. Maybe it's. You don't think it's good at all, but at a certain point, you just gotta post it and move on. You just because then what? You don't post it, and then you get even more depressed, and then you try to make another video, you get more. I'm at the point where I just want to post it and move on because I feel like I need to be creative. I need to be just moving forward all the time because lately I've been so depressed and so stuck and so just like stuck in the same thoughts. In the same head, in the same space, and I just, I feel like I need to slam through that. I need yeah. to blast through all that. And like, not working, slash posting videos, they, they go together. Um, not doing that gets more depressing. Cause you, <laughs> you lose like your purpose, like what, what are we doing here? Like, right. What? And we've been putting too much, well it's not that we've been putting too much emphasis on the podcast. It's just it that it just became the only thing. That yeah, we were and 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 maybe I was almost just over comp compensating for the fact we weren't making videos. I don't know, but we need to find a balance. Because I was thinking back, like to a year plus ago, when we were posting like two or three videos a week, and for me that was a really, it was a really cool. It was a good time for me because I was always creating something new. I was being creative, and I was just expressing myself more authentically than. Always trying to, I don't know, whatever. I've been, dude, I've been, I've got, I, I'm going to be real. I have a bottle of antidepressants <laughs> in, next to my bed and I take it out and I stare at it. And I think <laughs> last night I was like having a breakdown. This shit, like there's this Amazon, like we had these guys install TVs and they're such buffoons. These guys are such meatheads. 
they install it so close to the fucking wall, you can't plug anything in now. And now it's installed. On a mount. On a mount. So I've got this Amazon stick, so I want to watch YouTube or whatever, and I'm trying to plug it in. And I can feel the socket. Every I have to rip the TV off the wall and jam my hand up back there. And I was like almost bleeding my hand. And I, I could feel the socket. And it was just about to go in, but it wouldn't go in. Okay. And I was at this for like an hour. I was like OCD obsessed. I was losing my mind. I felt like I was aware of how insane I was acting, but I couldn't stop. It was so fucking close to getting in the hole. And all the time, I know that I'm such a lunatic. But I can't stop trying to get. And I was like, dude, this I'm so fucking twisted. Eva's coming in because I'm screaming like a lunatic. And she's like, she's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I, I don't know. She's like, this is not normal. I was like, I know, dude. I, but I got to get the damn stick in the hole. <laughs> you know? It's like this little thing I became obsessed with. And it was just manic. So I just stopped eventually. And, but I've been like, just been, I just feel like I've been crazy lately. I've got this bottle of, de- of antidepressants next to my bed. And I'm like, like, it's, I think it's time. But then I realized I never actually put in the work. Anti- mm-hmm. Taking antidepressants is like, it's either the easy way out or you already tried everything and so you should take it because there's no reason to suffer. But I'm like, this is the easy escape because I, there is a direct correlation between me being fat and lazy and not taking care of myself and me being depressed. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm, I'm on an upward trajectory right now. And I'm like, I can't take these if I'm not exercising, if I'm not eating right, if I'm not treating myself well. It's all connected. Yeah. There's a direct correlation between all that shit. So, I don't know. I've been, I've been, that was a couple of days ago. I've been exercising. I've been trying to eat better. Because I'm not, you know, you got to put in the work yourself to fix yourself before you take, well, that would be just a shortcut. Some people need antidepressants. I don't know if I do because I haven't actually tried to help myself yet enough mm-hmm. to warrant it. So I'm just like, I got to do something. So I'm trying to, I'm trying, this is all part of the same thing. I'm trying to, trying to exercise. I'm trying to treat myself better. I'm trying to just post videos, be more creative in, in that way. Man, though, dude, I'm going to get that fucking stick in that <laughs> hole. I swear to God, that stick is going in that hole. Can we take off the TV? I tried, dude. I was like, I was pulling the string. I was like, and it's a big TV too. And I was, I was, yeah, we can take it off. <laughs> There's an easy way to do it. But it just seemed, it was like, it was so sick. It felt like a biblical, like, metaphor. <laughs> because it was within reach and it was totally doable. You just <laughs> slide your hand up and it's just a little awkward. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, get in the hole! That's what I was literally yelling. And I'm just like, it's doable. That was the hardest part, but I just couldn't get it in. I know there's meaning somewhere in there. I don't know where it is. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Well, join the club. <laughs> what else? Some lunatic went to YouTube and tried to kill everybody there. Fucking Seriously? lunatic. You know, when that news broke that there was a shooting at YouTube, oh, here's this fucking... I'm going to show you guys this, but let me talk about this a little bit. When I heard there was a, sh- a shooting, active shooter there, the first thought I had was like, please, God, don't let this be some disgruntled loser YouTuber. Right. I was like, please, was the world is not that, we haven't gone that low, have we? And then at first they said it was a girlfriend <laughs> who shot her boyfriend or whatever. And I was, I was like, like great. Oh, I was like, okay. thank God. Well, weird that it happened at YouTube, but okay. <laughs> yeah. But then it wasn't. <coughs> no, it was just Where, lunatic. Who even started that rumor? I have no idea. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Um, well, and besides that, I have, I know people who work there, but I have one really close friend, someone that I actually yeah. care about, who works there. And I was like, Pfft. I was so worried because there was yeah, no was details really of anything yet, and you didn't know how bad it was. And I texted him, and he didn't he didn't, didn't answer me right away. So I was like, I was concerned. And not only that, but you care on the level that you know it's a traumatic event for them, mm-hmm. and you know that things aren't going to be the same now. 
at YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and all these people they're like, you know, it's almost like uh, it's not the same anymore because now the seal's been broken. And all of a sudden, someone who's angry at how you treated them is going to come try to murder you. But anyway, this lunatic, she was just thought that YouTube was suppressing her views. But honestly, her videos just suck and they're weird, which is the case most of the time, I have to say. If you're a fellow YouTuber listening to this and you think that there's a giant conspiracy to to reduce your views, that could be right to an extent, but for the most part, if you're not getting views, it's probably because your videos suck and your fans are tired of your shit. That's way more likely. That's probably 75% of it, at least. And in her case... I'm still tired on YouTube, and I'm not the only one. Oh my... So recently, uh, they also attacked my Persian channel Nassim Asafs and if you go and check it's like yeah there's no conspiracy your, sh your shit's weird I heard from that's actually the first time I'm watching her stuff no I didn't I hardly get views and my old videos that used to get many views I stopped getting sometimes that happens it doesn't even matter right that's <laughs> not even the right, question right, sure Sure. Even if they did. I guess I'm just addressing her point that it's like, people are entitled to be like, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. You're right. But my friend who works there was saying like, um, that, that, um, she was, she had a handgun and luckily she didn't have something more dangerous or more deadly, with more rounds. But he said there was like a busy lunch area where everyone was eating and she came up and just started shooting people randomly, but she was firing into a glass door lunch. So he was saying if she actually was, was trying to, trying to hit more people, she, there could have been a lot, it could have been a lot worse. I don't know what's going on. The weird thing too is the police saw her, found her in her car, up near YouTube studios because her dad called the police and was like, my daughter, or maybe it was her brother, a family member, my daughter or family member is super angry at YouTube and she's dangerous. Really? Yeah. Wow. She, they said, they said, I think she's going to do something. And so the police found her sleeping in her car, and they let her go. What? Because, well, the police said she was fine. She wasn't, she didn't seem dangerous. But I don't know, it's like... Huh. It's the same shit that happened with this recent school shooting. It's like, every, every sign was like, this yeah. kid is dangerous. Yeah. He's deranged, let's keep an eye on him, you know? <sighs> I'm glad that, that uh, it wasn't worse. I'll say that. Another thing that really was insane about this whole thing was all the comments everywhere. Yeah, everyone's just a, on everyone. what happened. Yeah, <clears throat> like oh, YouTube deserved it. <laughs> uh, like, that was obvious. I knew it was coming, and I was just like. But I saw so many, and they had upvotes too. Yeah, because everybody's got to be an edgy little. Everyone's so edgy, and no one can take anything seriously. It's like the ultimate meme, you know. Mm-hmm. Shooting at YouTube. Meme. Oh my god. So much meme potential. I'm gonna make a joke that I'm not supposed to. Whatever. These edgy kids will grow up someday. Um. Other stuff. There's a lot of other stuff, but Bobby just arrived, so. I actually have a lot of more stuff to talk about, but we can talk about it next time. Yeah. And then just get in with Bobby. So, let's do that. Um. Let's do that for pizza's sake, shall we? <laughs> it's 2.40. When do we start? How long have we been going? Uh, it's right at 2.15, so... Oh, wow. That went by fast. Okay. Great. Um, there's a couple... Of, the lawsuit... Our, our lawsuit... I'm talking about this. Then we'll bring Bobby in. Our lawsuit with uh, Matt Haas got published. So it's now officially case law. It was like a big deal published in a bunch of law journals and there was like 38 different legal precedents with really? def yeah with defamation and copyright huh. so it's like law students are going to be studying that shit now i feel like i learned so much about law yeah <laughs> from that lawsuit what a what a crazy thing man and yeah there was something funny about it like the lawyer who actually did all the work i was asking him he's not getting any credit because he was yeah. just credited as an associate. Mm -hmm. He's it's like weird how the whole thing works. How there's like a head lawyer, but he yeah. didn't actually do anything on the case. I don't know. Yeah. So so, 
there's a head mm-hmm. lawyer that we actually didn't like at all. And we're like, please don't, please don't involve him. I don't remember what happened, but something mm-hmm. weird happened. And then the associate guy, who's like a little tiny footmark, did everything. He was working full time on this bitch, writing all these amazing documents. He is an incredible lawyer. And he's not getting like any credit. So there you go. Life's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and this one guy who did literally nothing is like getting all the credit. The one guy who were like, I don't even want to talk to this guy because I don't trust him. Oh, I know. You know what this guy did? The guy who was in charge, he used to do all this bullshit. Like, we were spending so much money and we're not Microsoft, right? He knows we're just a couple (laughs) of kids. He'll do this shit like, when I'm being deposed. Okay, so the lawyer who did all the work is there giving me counsel in the deposition. This other guy, without asking my permission or consulting, is listening on the phone the whole time and never says anything. Okay, then he ch- so so that's eight hours, and he charges six hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and he charges us for all eight hours. So that ends up being like ten twenty thousand dollars, and I'm like, bro, like what the hell? Just don't listen. Rom was fine, and he does all these little bullshit to like rack up the bill and doesn't do anything. Ay, ay, ay. So anyway, congratulations to our um, attorneys. God bless. Ela said, is it okay to talk about this? I don't know. It's not details of the case, so I think probably. Okay. It's not like, um, it's not like sealed. You sure you want to mess with lawyers? Why, we're friends <laughs> Just with them. kidding. Shit, all right, now you scare the shit out of me. Okay. And then you gotta, like, type it, because we have a little private Discord, and Ela's like, you sure you want to talk about this? And now you're making me anxious. And now you're calling me out? Well, I, I can't not acknowledge <laughs> that because now I'm anxious on camera. Because I'm just going to look at it and be like... I'm I just gonna, said, are we allowed to talk gonna about this? I'm going to be like this. It's too late. I already talked about it. It's going to be like this. <laughs> I'm just going to do one of these. And it's like, well... <laughs> no, it's fine. All right. Um, so that's it. So let's bring Bobby Lee in. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We will be right, 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 right back. With Bobby Lee, it's going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be a total blast. You are not going to want to miss this. It's going to be so insane. So, guys, uh, we will see you in a brief moment. Dan, take it away. Thank you to Stitch Fix for sponsoring this episode. You can tell when a guy's got style. Or when they don't. When they're looking this good. Well, looking this good, a t-shirt and a hat and unshowered isn't easy. (laughs) Why don't you shower? (laughs) I showered last night. Okay. So I'm not completely unshowered, but you know what I mean. You can tell when a guy's showered. That should be the start of their coffee. You can tell when a guy's showered. (laughs) Order a shower. (laughs) Guys, it's tough to find clothing out there. It's hard enough to go to the mall. I don't even know where to buy clothing, let alone what to buy. That's why Stitch Fix is so awesome. You sign up. They give you a personal stylist, a.k.a. your mom or girlfriend in virtual reality, who cares about you, unlike your real mom. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. My mom loves me. It's just a joke. (laughs) But this person is going to, it's their job to make you look great. You tell them your sizes, how much you want to spend, what you're into, your preferences. And then this, like, this genius designer is going to send you uh, an outfit that's just going to, it's going to transform you. You know, you're going to be a new guy, just like Dan out here, our producer. He's got a sweater. He hasn't taken it off. It's disgusting. (laughs) But apparently he's getting a lot of female attention since he put that sweater on. Stitch Fix is the new way to shop for clothing, and it's unbelievably simple. So the items get delivered right to your home. You try them on, and you only pay for what you keep. It's risk-free. For crime, crime criminy's sake. What is crime? Criminy. I've heard that before, but I don't know what that means. Criminy's sake. Just send everything you don't want back. Shipping is free both ways, for criminy's sake. <laughs> Does it get any better? Try them out today, guys. You have got nothing, nothing to lose. So get started now at stitchfix.com slash h3, and you'll also get 25% off when you keep all five items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash h3 to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash h3. Go there. Get some bomb ass clothes. This designer is going to hook you up. Thank you to Stitch Fix. God bless you. Appreciate you. You're the best. Great. <laughs> Feel you. Next up, we've got Squarespace. I love Squarespace. Can I tell you why I love Squarespace? <sighs> yes. They're going to change your life. 
they're going to fulfill every dream and fantasy you've ever had. That's a bit of an oversell. <laughs> they just build, they help you build a website. But uh, a really cool, but here, yeah, really slick website. Right. They've got templates. They've got, uh, how do you call it? Templates, I guess. Yeah, templates. They've got like a bunch of templates. They make building a beautiful, slick website for if you're selling something, if you have a vlog, if you just want to make a... Um, art portfolio. Art portfolio. Or maybe you just want to share pictures of your... Uh, Don't say it. <laughs> use your imagination, you <laughs> sicko. <laughs> Maybe you just want to shit, you know, whatever it is, they've got the template and the tools. So even if you're not a NASA scientist, you can go <laughs> make the website of your dreams. That's how powerful and how simple and beautiful it is. I cannot endorse them enough. They give you the templates. They create the beautiful websites all in one platform. They allow you to manage your products, orders, and inventory. They track sales, give you customer insights, and grow your customer base all within their management and analytical tools. They make it easy to learn by providing webinars, workshops, and 24-7 customer support. Okay? It's incredible. And they make it simple to set up and transfer your domain. Look, you've got no excuse, you guys. Try Squarespace for free for 14 days and receive 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. It's risk-free. Get in there. Give it a shot. 14 days free. You're going to love it. All right? Head on over to squarespace.com slash h3. God bless you. Appreciate you. And finally, we have got Bowling Branch. Okay. Bowling Branch, they make bed sheets, right? Wow. Who cares? No. You didn't realize how comfortable bed sheets can be until you've rolled around in the lavender and fluffy cloud fields that is a bowl and branch bed sheet. Until you roll in the bowl. Until you roll in the bowl. And have, you, have you ever rolled in the bowl, my doggies? Here's the deal. You think that getting a great night's sleep is up to like, oh, an expensive mattress or an expensive pillow. The sheet plays just as an important role. And that's what people don't realize because it's it's got to breathe. It's got to be soft. Not too soft, though. If it's all silk, it's like, oh, wow. It just slips right off you like Teflon. I don't need that. <laughs> but it's the perfect medium, okay? Everything they make from bedding to blankets is made from pure 100% organic cotton, which means they start off soft and they get even softer over time. You buy directly from them, so you're essentially paying wholesale prices. Luxury sheets can cost up to $1,000, and frankly, you'd have to be psychotic to pay that. <laughs> I don't know who pays $1,000 for sheets, so I'm just going to say that flat out. But <laughs> if you go to Bowen Branch, they're only a couple hundred bucks, so that's like a massive discount. Everyone who tries Bowen Branch loves them. That's just, that's just a fact of life. That's why they have thousands of five-star reviews. Forbes, Wall Street Journal, and Fast Company are all talking about Bowen Branch. <laughs> I was just walking the other day. I was like, oh my god, have you heard of Bowen Branch? I was like, shit, dude. Who are you? Why are you talking to me? <laughs> Three U.S. presidents sleep on Bowen Branch, apparently. <laughs> we haven't fact-checked that. So I'm taking the word for it. Shipping is free, and you can try them for 30 nights. That's an insane offer. Try it for 30 nights. That's that simple. If you don't like it, if it's not worth it, send it back. That's awesome. If you don't want them, send them back for free for a refund. I doubt you're going to want to send them back because there's no risk, and there's no reason not to give it a try. So get started right now. My listeners get $50 off your first set of sheets at bowlandbranch.com. Use the promo code H3. Go to bowlandbranch.com today for $50 off your first set of sheets. That's B O L L and branch.com, promo code H3. Bull and branch.com, promo code H3. Thank you so much to our sponsors. And now let's, let's get back. watch and talk with your boy, Bobby Lee. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Here with the funny, great, wonderful Bobby Lee. Oh my God. Thank you so much <laughs> um, for saying that. Oh, thank you for being here. It's really cool to uh, have you here. I was kind of looking forward to it uh, because people on the internets. Is that how you say it? You can say it. That yeah, way. they were like, y "When are you gonna do it?" And then I, for like weeks, and now I'm here. I can't believe it. That's really. I nice. can swear. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it feels so good. <laughs> Why you can't swear on your podcast? No, I can, but it's like some places I go, and they're like, "You can't swear or talk about like your penis or, and things like that." You and can I'm, talk about your penis. You uh, can talk about your feet. I encourage you to talk about your feet. My feet. I want to hear my about left it. foot. My left foot is a disaster zone. <laughs> 
What happened? I, because, um, well, I don't wash it, and then also... What? Specifically, though? <laughs> I, do you shower, or do you bathe and, pe- like, pick your feet out? How no, no, no. What happened feet? was, years ago, I started going to the Korean spa, oh. and then my oh, feet started getting itchies. Right. And then, um, all of a sudden, I went to the hospital, <laughs> <laughs> and they said um, that I have, like, stage 9 gangrene on my left foot. What? Like, like a Wait, foot, foot fungus. Are you serious? Not, don't, isn't that like operable? You cut it off? No, no, no. It's not at that level, no. It's not like Vietnam War, like, you know, level. And so... So what? Well, I saw your feet. You're wearing sandals, and they look like... The bottom bad. are disaster. Can I see? No, 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 no. Maybe afterwards. You won't show it on camera. I've never shown anybody. I but mean, you're wearing open sandals. The whole Anyone walking behind you can see it. No, I know, but they need to breathe. That's why. <laughs> like people, like I, I go to New York like during like oh, snowstorm yeah. and I'll wear sandals. Oh my god. And people are like, what the fuck are you doing? What happens if you wear shoes and socks? It gets worse. Oh, no. And the itchiness gets worse. Oh, and no. then they give me an ointment and I refuse to put it on. Why? Because well, I put it on my right foot, but my left foot I like it itchy. <laughs> Why? I like scratching it. <laughs> so you are intentionally promoting gangrene on your foot. It's not gangrene, it's like foot fungi. So you're promoting foot fungi for the joy of itching it. Yeah, I just my and then my girlfriend at like four in the morning, she, this is what she hears. That's pretty twisted. Oh, dude. Yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah. I gotta admit. Yeah, I it's pretty itching. twisted. Like, you, if I have a bite, a mosquito bite, yeah, I'll do anything to avoid itching it. Why? I, I if it, the, the relief though, does it doesn't cause oh, relief? Okay. It's like relief, and it gets worse <laughs> immediately. Ah, uh, like, dude, I, I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm more along the lines of, of Bobby in that, like, if I have a bite, I'll itch it off. Yeah. And then I'm done. I like it when it bleeds a little bit. I don't necessarily go after the blood, but... You don't? No, it, I'm a blood guy. For sure. All day, every day. You are you are a sick man. And I like it, then it dries, and then the, the scab happens. And then sometimes, it depends on how I feel, I sometimes will eat it. I believe you. Have you ever eaten sca- your own scabs? No. no. Why do you eat it? I feel this. I have to say, I find that repulsive. <laughs> but I'm curious. <laughs> I'm you curious, do? I'm curious about about the experience of eating your own scabs. Because it's like it's about? like home jerky. <laughs> oh my god. Like man man made jerky that you're making on your body. <laughs> Would you ever eat another person's scab? No, 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 no. I can only eat my own burgers, my own scabs, and stuff like do that. You, <laughs> What? What's the matter? Do you eat? Would you? You eat your own burgers still to this day? I have tried. I've, I, I, well, not every day. Not every day. But I've, a, I, a couple a, times a year I've done it. Here's the thing. So what? <laughs> well, okay. So let me follow that. Because is it just like when you have a nice, fat, juicy, satisfying burger that you pop it in like a Tic Tac? No, I mean, you know what? I do what other humans do is that, you know, you pick your nose and then you roll into a ball. I do that. So, well, there we go. But I right? Don't, I don't. I, that's the crucial <laughs> Why you I'm don't missing. put it in your mouth? I don't. No. And, and let me just say this right now: I'm I'm in my 40s, so um, you know, I'm an adult, so I don't do it every day. Right. I don't do it even once a month, but a couple times a year, right? <laughs> I'll roll a nice ball. You I'll look it at it. There's if there's different colors in it, oh, God. like a little blood, oh. a little bit of like a darker, like grayish thing. Right. And if it's like juicy and hard at the same time, right. Sometimes I pop it in. If it just looks that. Because outside. let me say this right now, my friend. How is that? Disgusting! It came from inside me. Yeah, but so yeah, but I'm, pl- I'm just putting some, it back inside some, me. Some things that come from your body aren't meant to go back in, like shit and piss. It's excrement. It's waste. Oh, that's true. I don't do shit and piss. <laughs> well, that, that's right. That's a good point. Maybe maybe we need to. Yeah, but can I just say this? Kind of make a. It, but there, there's also <laughs> a taste to it that's a little satisfying. Right. I'm a salt man. So I know I know <laughs> I know that people eat boogers. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just I'm not saying this to like. Hide my shame. Yeah. I've never eaten a booger. I don't. You've I never don't. eaten a booger. I know never that like kids do it, but yeah. like, have you ever that's... smelled your own cum? Well, I haven't like, sm- I, and not that way. But <laughs> yeah. what I will admit to is like yeah. when you come in on, like dry when cum dries, it has a smell. Well, I've never dried cum. When if you like, you have like a, a, a little farm, a, a, a dry cum farm in your bathroom yeah. or something. Sometimes <laughs> if if you're at home by yourself and you're feeling pretty depressed, a couple lonely yeah, nights, yeah. and then all of a sudden there's like a whole pile of cum rags next yeah. to the bed. There's a smell. Yeah. What does it smell like? I'll tell you what it smells it's like. Unbelievable. To me, it's unbelievable. To me, it smells like chlorine. Yeah. Does it not smell like chlorine? It does have a smell of chlorine. Yeah. Makes me almost want to. Did we open wrong? No, this is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We opened but a little want, weird, huh? So, well, what I want to go back to... Yeah, sorry, my a, bad. No, this is a perfect opening. I yeah. love this. Um, is that I see you're vaping, and I know you're a vapor. Yeah. 
we have a vape that is somewhat ceremonial here at our show. Sure. And we wanted to know if you would try hitting our vape. I would. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Bring it, bring in. it in. Bring it in. Yeah, yeah. Show me your feet. <laughs> I'll do it at the end. I promise. You'll be the first. Aside really? from my girlfriend, you'll be the first one to see it <laughs> on camera. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to show it to the camera though. You can look at it while. What is this? Oh my God! Look yeah, at this, this thing. Is no joke. I, I I'm sober, so it can't be marijuana though. It's not. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Rel- I don't want to relapse on your show. It's <laughs> not even tobacco. It's just vape juice. Oh my God! Look at that thing. <laughs> so this is I've the vape god. So here's the button here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you just push and suck. What kind of flavor is it? It's uh, uh, uh unicorn donut. 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 Oh, I love yeah. donuts. So here's <laughs> I, here. I don't want to. So you have to push the button when you say I know, I, I understand. Okay, okay. All, right, all right, all right. So if you want to rip it fat as possible, it's not a competition, but people are competing. <laughs> oh, shit. Whoa! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> what the, the thing is, oh, no. when you cough, I don't know what happens, oh, but when you so rip good. that, when you cough, the smoke disappears. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. want to do it again. Just, like, <laughs> that's okay. a really nice. You machine. absorbed all that. Thank you, man. It's oh, 150 battery mod. Did you get it for free or did you um, pay we, for it? We we paid a lot of money for that. Oh my god, <laughs> we paid dearly. We had to sacrifice the intern. He wasn't that good. Did you two meet on Tinder? How'd you guys meet? No. Uh, <laughs> man, you know what? I, it's funny. I. I feel so bad in a way for people who are like on Tinder. It seems rough. We met pre Tinder. Yeah. Oh, pre Tinder. That's great. I met my girlfriend on Tinder. Really? I love exists on Tinder. Yeah, I I know a lot of relationships that started on Tinder. I mean, that's just how people date these days. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, how do you meet people anyway? I know. If I was single now, I wouldn't know how to meet anyone. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Tinder's great because you run into people. Yeah, a lot of it's like you know hit and runs. You know. You just tap it and then you go. Right. Some people use Tinder for that aspect. Right. I used it for love, mm. and it, it worked. worked. I, I I swiped right on Kalila. It was my third date. I met her three days in. Well, I did my third. Yeah, my third date. I had third already date. gone out with two other oh, okay. people. Okay. Mm. She's my third one, mm. and then um, yeah, and then I've been with her since. Wow. It's five years. This is the best endorsement of Tinder That's ever. Really cool. Yeah, I mean, you can tap and run. I've d- I did that for the first two. Right. You know, but you feel guilty about that. I don't like tapping and running. Well, do you not think that they wanted to tap and run? Maybe. No, because I, I'm never a one night stand. Mm. I'm like, if if I get if I if girls want to have sexuals sexualities with me, can I right. say it that way? That's it's got to be a bit l- vulgar, but. It, Sorry, but it's got to be long term. I've never been like I, I I had a friend named Kalisto, and we would go to a bar. And girls would look at him and go, yeah, I'll, I'll fuck that for one night, <laughs> right? But they would look at me and like, I, I only fuck that if that's a relationship. <laughs> right, right, right. I need right? more. So I have, to, I have to be in a relationship <laughs> for me to get any kind of sexualities. Interesting. Yeah. What do you mean? What How do I mean? Inter- yeah. I, I don't know. Just listening to you talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, Not yeah. interesting. No, I relate. Because a, a guy that looks like me. We, I think we have similar. Yeah, because, <laughs> because like, I'm, not, I'm not like King Dong. <laughs> I'm not They're jacked. Not. I'm not handsome. Thank you for the endorsement. And, yeah. and I feel the same way about you as well. We, we can look just reciprocate. Like, we, we look like somebody drew us. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like we're like not real humans that like Tim Burton would. I'm going to experiment. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 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 Well, to so, answer your question, we met in Israel on birthright. What do you if mean? You know what that is. What it's is like birthright? A, it's, it's a weird thing where it's a like bunch a trip. Of, um, it's, it's, it's a bunch of rich Zionists. Send young Jews to Israel <laughs> for free, yeah. for a free trip, and the hope that like they are in, uh, they're gonna learn about Israel, birthing in you a joy for the Jewish motherland. Right. I moved there. It worked, but I took her back, so it failed. Wow. <laughs> you took her from there. Yeah, I moved. You guys there. moved together, back, back, back together. Yeah. I lived there for five years. It was a long process of going back and forth. Oh wow! But I lived there five years. We got married, and then we got a green card and said, "Smell you later." <laughs> Are you Jewish? Yes. It's fantastic. Can you not tell? I can't tell. I'll really? <laughs> yeah. Gila doesn't really have a Jewish thing because she's she's a, exa- does she look Jewish? No, she looks uh, no. You look artistic though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. You no, know, you look like somebody that was like an artist from the forties. Not that you know, I'll that, not that. No, in terms of the age, I'm not saying that you look old. No, I'm I just saying if I took, you saw so a photo of you, like these are Spanish art, um, uh, oil painters from the 40s. I like and that. And your face was in there, I'd be like, yeah, I believe that. <laughs> That's special. I'm yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do I look like? <laughs> you look like, ugh. <laughs> That'd be real. And I, 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 need, I need harsh criticisms. Well, what the way you're dressed like? now, I wouldn't be surprised to see you tossing some 
you know, beef and broccoli. Wow, that's <laughs> racial, huh? Well, I don't I, know. Do so I look like I should be in a dish? <laughs> because you know, because not not in, yeah, yeah, but tossing. Oh, toss- because you've got like a chef thing, and you've got like oh. a oh, beanie on. I see, I see, yeah, yeah. Wow, you've got nice hair. <laughs> now, now the, everything's now changed. it's different. Thank you. You look like you could be dropping some bomb ass tweets for a marketing company. Thank you so much. <laughs> So I look relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that hair could get you by, and the you know hip- what kind of race I am, or ethnicity? you're Korean. How'd you know? Because I fucking you googled uh, it. I'm a guy, dude. Yeah, yeah. I read shit. I'm definitely Korean for sure. Yeah. You know. What do you? What about me? <laughs> you're Jew. <laughs> right. Am I not right? Well, that's not really. Well, we already s- said it. Sorry to say. Yeah. But like, what country am I from? You're from America. Yeah, that's it. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, everything about you is America. Yeah. yeah. But I was, I was kind of. But you know what? You do now. If I look at your arms, you are Jewish. <laughs> what does that mean? What did you recognize about my arm? It's just that I, 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 I gotta like, I gotta say this, and I, uh, I gotta think about what I'm saying here. Just okay. say it. Just be blunt. No, no, I don't want to be blunt. <laughs> I want to. You don't want to be blunt. No, because I have friends. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That are writers, like th- my friend David King. You know David King? He's a great writer. Right. He was on Love. He wrote for Love. Okay. You guys have the same arms and hands. Right. <laughs> okay. And I, I don't even mean. I don't even know what that means. You just, they just look similar. Mm-hmm. And so that's all I'm gonna. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. That's okay. I get the sense <laughs> you're trying to get at something. N- no, you just have a Jewish man's body. Okay, that's mm. fine. <laughs> Do you know? I, it's I, a golem. A, a golem. <laughs> Yeah, like skinny arms, kind of. Oh big, yeah, yeah. Right? No, I, I've is always, that, that... I've always known that I'm both fat and skinny at the same time. That's all I want to say. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm not but you, you on. have like a very like, you have like, and you have a similar body. I've seen you shirtless. God bless you. And you know, hair. thank you. You've like got the whole thing like real, you know. Yeah, but I did this to my own body. Well, I did. This too. is not. A, yeah. Oh, you. Oh, oh, are you implying that I'm just somehow <laughs> doomed, doomed to these? Pudgy folds, these no, doughy, no, 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 this no. doughy prison no, cell. No, no, no. no but you, yeah, I, you, I used to be fit. I played water polo. Yeah. In high school. Yeah. I was tanned. I had curly hair, and girls wanted to f- suck my dick. I, I can't believe it. Not that I ever. I'm not accusing you of like being unfuckable. I was fuckable for about a year. Yeah. In my life, were you I ever fuckable? I don't think I ever was because the thing is, is that. Um, <laughs> I grew up, I'm older than I am, so in the- What? I'm older than people think I am. How old are you? Well, guess. I would guess that you're about 40. Uh-oh. What you said or- I'm almost that... 47. That what? You look great. Really? God bless Thank you. you. Thank you. Really? God Thank bless you. you. I look great, don't I? You don't even have any gray I hair would, or anything. I, I would guess bit. before you said 37. I honestly and, and, would have guessed- and, and I would have- I just say something? I love Israel. I love <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I was like going to guess lower, but I knew I guessed on the high side. Well, I already look said at this. You already like, said, oh my yeah. God. How old do I look? <laughs> but your face is deceiving, but with the whole situation, I would say 38. It's a rough life for me. I'm 32. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but in a way, in yeah. a way, I like, because it's like, I still have life ahead of me. Right. You may so or like may not. it's you may or may not. Yeah, but like on average, yeah, let's say, yeah, yeah. Let's say uh, it's what it is is the the sprinkly white hair. Yeah, it doesn't help. It, that doesn't help. He no. had it since I when we met. It was twenty one, and he already had the white hair. He did. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you know you got fucked by life, but it's kind of, but also it's kind of fuckable. If I wasn't a pudgy doughy fuck, right. just imagine a world where I'm George Clooney. That's it. No. Just imagine that world for a second. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> okay. All right. You're, 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 I asked you to use I, can your I, can imagination. I right now? Yeah. And I, I know I'm a guest on your podcast. <laughs> right. But there's no fucking way that you're George Clooney. They're, you're not in the same category. I think that you're, I just you're said, not ugly. You're not ugly, but you're not George Clooney. I just said imagine a world. Am I Chow Young Fat? Chow Young Fat? You know who that is? He's a handsome uh, man. Uh, uh, Chinese He's actor. the guy from Crouching Tiger and Dragon? That's right. There we go. You're, oh. the, you're the guy who got this fucking the shirkin in the forehead, man. Ah, is there what? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not Chow Young Fat. Thank you. You're not George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. You know what? What? I'm not offended by it. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've never been deluded about like. Go back to what you said. Like you, I'm not the kind of guy that girls are just like. Oh, I want to fuck that guy. Yeah, me either. And that's what you mean. You have to. You have to woo them. You have to romance them. You have to be like, hey, you know, there's other things I can cook. Right, but can I just say this? That's I can, a great point what you're making. Yeah. Okay. Because if I was from the gate, 
a guy that women wanted to have sex with, I wouldn't have developed that portion of my personality to drive me into what? To drive me into where I, I went. Yeah, I agree. Do, do you I, what I'm I understand and I agree. I used humor <laughs> as a defense mechanism. Same exact. Because I was picked on and whatnot. Yeah. And and because I didn't get girls in high school and whatnot, that it drove me into like I gotta try to get laid. So I need extras. It's like right. Wolverine, he needs the claws. <laughs> well, it's true. And and developing a sense of humor is something that can be attractive that you develop in lieu of being a disgusting monster. Yeah. Like a basically Notre Dame. <laughs> right. A, a hunchback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Not you, but you know. I remember the first time I had a crush on a girl. It must have been I literally kindergarten. And I was being foolish and she giggled. And I remember the first time I made a girl laugh. And I was yeah. like, I never forgot it. It's okay. I was like, shit. Like there's something to this fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what happened to it's me? Goofy business. When I was graduating from high school, I was a virgin. Okay. Right, me too, by the way. So Thank don't, you. don't be too worried about it. No, I'm not worried about it at all. I'm killing don't, the game. Hey, don't stress. I'm killing don't the game stress. now. Don't stress. I'm not stressed out about it. A lot of people graduate high school virgin. Right. <laughs> and But I didn't really even get laid until I was 23. Mm. But I had, I, I had, I did some, I paid for some. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. But that's fine. I don't feel bad about it. That's fine. Yeah. yeah thank God you. bless you. God bless you. But thank at you. 23, I started doing stand-up. <laughs> And what happened was, imagine this, I went up on stage one night, it was a Saturday night, I hosted this show at the comedy store in La Jolla, mm -hmm. and there was a, a girl in the front row, a blonde girl, mm. and I said to her, she looked sad, because it's the night Chris, uh, Princess Diana died, mm. and she was sad, I go, don't be sad about it, right? I said that to her, <laughs> and that night, she called the club and said, hey, where's that little Asian guy? <laughs> and then I got on the phone, and she goes, hey, you wanna hang out? And then three days later, she lived with her mom, and I was 69ing with her in her mom's <laughs> in her closet. Was that your first sex act? Yeah. Oh, I was damn, right, I was that's 69 like right into the race. Yeah, I was 69 <laughs> and she was a white, white girl, a blonde, and I couldn't believe it. So that's, her, This is her ass cheeks like, like this. Right. And I was going, thank you, God. Like <laughs> and so that was your impactful. And that's when I, I go, i got to keep doing this comedy When thing. you were face deep in vagina, you realized, <laughs> yeah, this is it. Yeah. And it changed my life. <laughs> and then I've been like, yeah, and I just kept pursuing it. Would you say you got into comedy for the explicit reason of, of girls? Because I've heard other people say that. I wouldn't necessarily say that's true for me, but I know it's true for a lot of I people. I don't do it for the people. Right. <laughs> I don't give a f- I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that people come out to see me, I'm but- just, Sorry, we have this fucking lunatic who shot up YouTube on the screen. Let me get her out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Better. That's better. That feels better. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a lunatic <laughs> lunched, lurched over us. Who, you, we, who was that person? It's the girl. You've probably heard that was there was a shooter at YouTube shooting. headquarters. Yeah. That was her. Why did she do it? Well, crazy. Clear. Well, the reason is that she thought YouTube was suppressing her channel, but obviously the real reason is that she was deranged. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of crazies. Even in comedy, like in the open mm. mic level, you can just weed them out. You can see them. Really? Mm. Yeah, people that are just delusional. Well, it's battle mm. of the, uh, I mean, it really is battle of the fittest right there, of the open mics. Oh, yeah. Well, it, you know, what it is is that at open mics, you have people, kids that have the actual talent, right? But they're so mixed in with the crazies mm. that it's a diffi difficult you know, life to lead. You know, Sometimes you have to hard, somehow... Though. Right. You gotta somehow get through it right. for years, and it's really, it's really just depressing. Really, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I've heard from. I never went through the. I mean, coming up on YouTube is a whole different. Yeah, thing, it's different. What's well, a better? It's a better. It's it's a better um, situation for for kids now. I mean, you imagine in the '90s when I started, mm -hmm. there was no YouTube, there was mm -hmm. no Twitter. Right. And you had to just do stand up with a bunch of homeless people, <laughs> and like crazy is like you see it like a, a transsexual midget. <laughs> can I say midget? You can say midget. Yeah, yeah. And they're I like can't, I can't. on the same show you are, and they're like, "What's up, man? Ha, we're gonna make it." And you're like, <laughs> I, I, "I don't know if I am ever gonna make it because I'm here." Do you remember any of the worst, like the worst shit you saw on stage? In those early days, what was some of the worst acts you saw? Oh my God! I mean, you would see a guy like you know come uh, walk on stage, and you know they're like, "Oh, this is fine," and then you look down and their penis is out. What? That's a bad. That, that's a that's a tough act. To that's follow. a tough act to follow. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, penis oh is hard. <laughs> Follow that, you know what I mean? My, I couldn't do that with mine because mine is, um, mine, mine's gray. Your dick is gray? Why? I don't. <laughs> like, it's not the skin c- tone of your face? No, it's, no, 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 no. It used to be purple. <laughs> used to be dark. You know, in Mad TV, when I was on Mad TV, they used to call me Black Sack. <laughs> Black Sack. Because my sacks were so dark. It's like a pirate name. Thank you. <laughs> um, but well, everyone on the cast had seen your sack enough to nickname it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And that's, that feels good. Like Jordan Peele, all these guys would call me Black Sack. Good morning, Black Sack. <laughs> I go, hi. But, um, so your sack is dark. But, 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 the... as, I go, but as I got older in my 40s, mm-hmm. my penis looks like a, a sick alien. Mm. Do you ever see the movie E.T.? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Remember you was sick in the river? Oh, right. He was in the He's river. He's all gray. Yeah. So if I pull it out, like, flowers will die. Oh, wow. Yeah, the glow's gone. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's tough. But you know what? My girlfriend still likes it. Mm. So that's the most, that's, that's, I'm winning. That's still. nice. Yeah. To her, it's more like the glowing finger. It, well, yeah, yeah. There's barely a glow, but. Do you like your penis? So, <laughs> I, when I was younger, when I was, like, a young man, yeah. I, yeah, I, I thought, I was, like, I was proud of it. There was a <laughs> you were I, there was a moment when I was well, proud can I, of it. Jews, can I call you a Jew? You can call me Jew. Yeah, every Jew, Jewish person that I've, when I've seen their penis, they've been girthy. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I thought you were accusing me of having a small dick. That's what you're getting. <laughs> no, I was no, I wasn't because I've seen Pauly Shores so many times, and it's like you know. Oh, Pauly Shores strapped. <laughs> oh my god! It's I didn't like know a was ride a at Magic Mountain. It's like, it's <laughs> really, like a loop to it. Oh, right. It's like it does like a. It does like a, like this, <laughs> right? Because of years of just using it in a in a terrible way, you know. So I I don't have any loops or it's anything fine, but I, I like just, that. But every Jew that I've seen their penis, it's been amazing. And also, every girl that I've talked to that that have penetrated done it with Jews, they say that <laughs> right. they they really are good in the sack. Well, that's nice. I know. Why I just looked at your wife and camera. You her. winked at winked my wife. I'm so sorry for me. I'm so sorry. That was that was a my bad. It, it, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that felt weird. Um, I'm gonna put this back on. Yeah, cover up. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna cover it back. <laughs> but um, yeah. there was a point when I was real proud of my of my penis. But as I've gotten older and fatter, and my balls are droopier. Like you get bigger, so your dick looks smaller. So like right, I'm getting fatter and right. fatter and fatter. That's interesting. And I'm getting worse. I'm in worse shape. What was so it recently that there was a com- comedian? Ricky Gervais was talking about droopy balls. Oh and God, frankly, I've been so thinking about funny. that for a long time. And I, when I was a kid, I remember thinking like the day that my balls droop lower than my dick yeah. is the day that I'm old. And I have right. to tell you, my it's been a long time since I remember my dick drooping lower than my balls. Yeah. When it's when it's like in its sleeping state. Yeah, my balls look like it's just Asian food. It's like what kind of food? Dark kind of dumplings. <laughs> oh, dumplings! Yeah, well, fried they dumplings. Ju- yeah, like fried dark dumplings. <laughs> you know, and they just—they've always. Is been. that a thing? Is that an Asian thing? What where the mean? balls are dark? Because why are your balls so dark? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, because like you know, there's different yeah. colors going on. I, I don't know. Oh, you I go can. to the beach and yeah, I put a little fucking oil just on it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I put little, like little, those little tin foil things underneath. <laughs> right, right, get... right, right, right. No, um, I think that I don't know why, but I think that if you look at uh, this, is, the people are gonna get mad when I say it, what I'm about to say. But I think <laughs> if you look at Asian porn, for instance, mm. Japanese porn, right? You know, you, the 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 vaginal color <laughs> of Asian women are are darker purple. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've noticed that, but uh, I'm sure that's a thing. Yeah, it's. It's life. Yeah, it's life. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying so Asians have a little their I genitals think we have darker are colored genitals, a little different. Yeah. And that doesn't make so it's not your fault necessarily. It's not even a fault. I yeah, think you didn't. It's not like I'm not going to blame you for that. Don't blame me for something <laughs> that I'm proud of. Yeah, I'm proud of my dark sack. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's special. It's extra wrinkly too. Is yours wrinkly? Man, it's like a tangerine, dude. Like, <laughs> it's like one of those tangerines <laughs> yeah. that yeah. like is specially made so that you can the feel it easy. Ones, the, yeah, the easy you know what I'm saying. Whenever a girl sees my sack, they go, "It's really wrinkly." I go, "It's because they're wise." I say no, easy peel. Oh, it's an easy peel. Yeah. That's better, yeah, yeah. It's easy peel. Yeah, that's interesting. I, gotta, I wanna ask you, you are notorious. I've seen you on these uh, news shows, morning shows, and you get real touchy-feely with the... I can't do that anymore. That's what I was gonna ask. Can you do that now? Because shit's changed. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't do a lot of things that <laughs> no. I used to do. Mm-hmm. And I, and, and I, I was, I've been touchy-feely with like news anchors, but just guys and girls. It's right. not just mm-hmm. girls. And I right. don't... T- touch their, I just kind of like either kiss their 
or I'll touch their knees, but just in a joking way. But you can't do that anymore. Yeah. So I'm very like aware of a lot of things. I can't even squeeze another comedian's ass. Like a man, like Chris D'Elia the other night. You know who he is? No. You don't know Chris D'Elia? I if you pulled up it's a picture, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. hot. Right? I'm bad with names. Yeah, and I um I squeezed his butt. And he's like, I'm okay with that. He looked at me because I'm okay with it, but don't. Do that to other people. That's like an oh intervention. He, that right. kind of thinks. I kind of feel like that's him saying, "I'm not okay with this." He's okay with it. He is. Yeah, okay. he's no, pretty maybe more like he's looking out for you. That's like, he was looking. Yeah, he was yeah. looking out for me, and because I'm on a new um, ABC like family show, that like um, I've I've really been like you got to be on aware. The yeah, of it. I I read somewhere that you had signed some kind of contract with ABC that you had to tone down your behavior across the board. It wasn't that. No, no. I just been told by my agents that like tone it down. just tone it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um How's that been for you? It's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> because everything that I do isn't there's no bad intentions. It's I don't yeah. do anything sexually. Mm -hmm. Like I don't you know, nothing you're that just, I do is sexual. You're making people uncomfortable. Is what I, I like controlling as. situations, but um, and that's you can't true. control people in that way. You know? yeah. <laughs> I just feel I, yeah, so I just, disappointed. I, it's not that. It's just like I like you know being naked and stuff. Right. And um, but I'm willing to pay, play game, ball. Play ball. So I've been playing ball, and everything's fine. Good. You know? well, is that well? You're compromising. Has it been worth it? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, there, I'm in a dilemma. Really? Because here's the the dilemma. When I, you know, I was on Mad TV for so long, right. and it was a sketch show, and that was back in the day when you could be free. And after Mad TV, I was sort of, I couldn't work really. I just didn't really find that mm. I was a hot commodity. So mm. I did the road, and I did internet stuff, and I did mm. a podcast, and I did stuff to rebuild, you know, my fan base. And mm. I've been, I've been very comfortable in that world. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I love doing th things. There's no rules. Yeah, no I love being with yeah. you two right now. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a kinship and, and a bond. You, and we're fellowshipping. Thank you. We are <laughs> definitely fellowshipping. We're definitely fellowshipping, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, um, but then it's like, I look at my friends that do sitcoms and they do more corporate yeah. entertainment. Traditional. Yeah. And they make so much money. Right. <laughs> and so, in, you, know, <laughs> you know, when you're on the inter internet for a long time and you look at that you know the glossy like mm -hmm. the billboard and like people you know smiling you know going hey we're making money <laughs> yeah, you yeah. think to yourself oh i want that <laughs> yeah but then now when you're, when you're on it it's a little weird right. but um i'm willing to play ball try it out i'm trying it out mm -hmm. um i've done it before i was on a show called animal practice it got mm -hmm. It was about animals and stuff, but um, it got canceled right away. <laughs> but this one, it looks like it could be on for a little bit. So yeah, give it a shot. I'm getting well, excited. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. I have to do it. Yeah, you know, I need to. I need to get out of my apartment mm. because I have three dogs, uh, two dogs, and three cats. What do you mean you have wow. to get out of your apartment? You're saying it's like a financial thing? Like no, no, I just have so many animals. See, I when I bought my uh, condo, you're it talking was, about literally. You just need. You and escape. don't want to be there. No, 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 no. What I need to do is I need to buy a house so I can <laughs> okay. have a yard. Right, 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 right. Uh -huh. Because I don't know if you know this. You have how many dogs do you have? We have one, one. little tiny little. Do you guy. live in a house? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we live in in a condo, but it's third, three levels up. So every that's four rough. hours, I have to get yeah. take the two that's dogs brutal. down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why we waited so long to get a dog. Because before we lived in apartments our whole life. Yeah. And so we never got a dog because we. I knew it would be like that. Right, but a dog is life changing. It is. It's oh my so god! So life changing. It makes life so much better. Yeah. It's kind of blown yeah. my mind. Yeah. It's e so Shredder, the yeah, little right. guy you oh, met. Oh, I love Shredder. Oh, he's under the table, actually. Where is he? Yeah, right Shredder. here. Look how sweet he, he is. He's <laughs> just at Ela's feet. Shredder's the best. So, so it's Ela's first dog. I had I had dogs. <laughs> when I was, never had a dog. Never had wow. a dog yeah. or a pet. In and general. so and and it's my first dog since I was a kid, which doesn't really count. I didn't give a shit because I was just a fucking kid. Um. But it, it's like a magical, beautiful it thing. It really is life-changing. It's like such said. a sweet, innocent love. He just loves. <laughs> he's just so sweet. Like, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. Now he's he's just got potty trained. He's good. So we, we had him in a cage for a long time, and now he's out and free. And we have, like, a tiny little stairs so he can come up on our bed as he, as he wants to. And every night, he'll climb up on the stairs, and he'll, like, settle next to you on the bed. He'll crawl up right up and like nestle on your neck and yeah. just and it's like the sweetest <laughs> shit. I have pictures when you were sleeping last night that just oh blew my mind. Let me show. Up. I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't give that. a shit about the dead air that's gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like this is more important. Sure. But I, I want to say talk about my two dogs. Uh, 
<laughs> Look at that. Oh, so it. cute. If you didn't see it, you're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I, wait, wait, yeah. Let me look at the photo again. Let me look at the photo again. I'm going I'm yeah. to why, why do you sleep like that? <laughs> like what? I mean, you have all the blankets over yeah, your face. You can I'm sleep. Like you that. don't feel uh that's how I Trap. feel comfortable. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, wow. If, and if I can be like... <laughs> oh, yeah. It can be summer and I'm like super hot, but I have to have the blanket like all over me. My girlfriend's like that too. Mm. She takes all the fucking blanket. <laughs> and I, oh, it's, I know it's a meme and it's like everyone jokes. So we used to have a queen size bed and like... So I was like, of course, she takes all the blanket. There's nothing. The so we got an extra large, super massive, king size, oversized blanket. Yeah. There's enough blanket for 20 people. And somehow I still have no blanket. Yeah. My girlfriend thinks the blanket is a tortilla. And she's like, I want, I'm a burrito. <laughs> yeah. And she'll like wrap her way. Right. And then you're like, you know, you it's hypothermia. brutal. Yeah. 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 You're on the, edge <laughs> of the bed. Yeah, I know it's a joke. I don't but know it's that brutal. it happens though, because I'm just sleeping. I don't control it. Sometimes <laughs> you control it. <laughs> Oh, no, you know... It, you know it, what you're doing. And, and sometimes it trips me out because sometimes I'll dare to take a little more blanket. I'll dare. And then right. I'm like, do you have enough? And you're like, yeah, I have plenty. <laughs> and I was like, you had all that spare blanket all this time? I don't know. Can you guys <laughs> fall asleep cuddling or no? No, no, no chance. I, I can't. No. I can't, yeah. Who can't? Even, a, even if a finger's touching me, I can't sleep. I agree. Yeah, I'm neurotic like yeah, that. Yeah, you you just cannot. I don't believe that anyone can fall asleep cuddling. I don't think that's oh, actually do. a real thing. Really? Oh yeah, people. Yeah, they maybe they go, in like we love each other. <laughs> We're one of the same. Yeah, and they'll like sleep that way. Maybe <laughs> for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> After you've been together for more than a week, if you're still cuddling, that relationship's not gonna last. <laughs> <laughs> I give it. I give it two months. Yeah. <laughs> but my two dogs. Can I say this? This is that, and I, I feel guilty about this. But I love my dogs more than I love my cousins. <laughs> Your cousins, cousins. cares about their cousins. I <laughs> know. Uh, I like if my cousin. One of my cousins died. It would be devastating. <laughs> but still, I'll still be able to play like Xbox like that night. <laughs> right. You know, like your your cousin yeah. Andy died. You're like, like damn, oh. what a shame. And I'll still play like you know right. Far Cry Five or whatever. Yeah. Right. You know that doesn't sound that crazy to me. It doesn't, right? Because but if my the... dog died, oh, I'm yeah. out for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's your I child. Can't You're with that happening day. right now. Yeah. It would be. I would like maybe even. I would even, would you do the what taxidermy? No. What is that? I feel like that's a dis- where when when an animal they, dies, you you, you put stuff oh. in it and, and and it's still there. It's weird. I feel, st- I feel like it's like it would make you me can't more ever sad, get over it, right? Like you're always dredging up the memory of your of your. You yeah. have a, what what? What do you mean? Do you have a taxidermy of a former pet? No, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't would be able it? to do it. Mm. No, what I would do is clone. <laughs> that happened, Barbara Streisand. Yeah. What do you think about that story? I'll clone. But it's not really the same dog. It is close mm-hmm. enough for me. It's close enough. Is for it me. satisfying? I wonder. They look alike, not, right? They're... But it's not your guy. I know it's not, but it's like you know, it's it looks like Just it. Just start over. <laughs> Get a new guy. There's love. There's love after love. Love after life. Or whatever. Yeah, but would it not have certain traits though similar? It might. Well, what she said is that they have. She got three, right? Yeah. yeah. She said yeah. they have different personalities. Oh. Uh... You got. I, I would say. I feel like we need to talk to her to find out. Yeah, the let's can we get her in here. <laughs> would, if, like, if either one of you passed away, would you clone the other person? That's more weird. No, I would. Well, also, it's a, you can't do that. By the way, <laughs> too, it's not really an option. I I think they can do it. <laughs> oh, they can. I think they can scientifically do it. They can. Definitely. If you can do goats and they dogs, can, they just don't. Do you think morally it's wrong? It's illegal, and I do. But think what, let me ask wrong. you this: Why is it? Is it because because uh, you're not. Because you're basically dooming this person to a the weird, single, strangest, most unusual, unnatural life ever. And also, you don't have to tell them who can make that decision How, what you for just, that person. What? Just go. Just look at your. You know, like if Kalila died, and I cloned her. Right? She's a baby. <laughs> and then right? what? It's your daughter. <laughs> She's my daughter. And you're getting married to your oh, daughter? No! Oh, I'm not going to Woody Allen it. <laughs> what the hell? I'm not going to Woody <laughs> Allen it. No, but it's your daughter. I know, but I would never tell her. I go, you're actually like my ex-girlfriend. You know, my girlfriend. <laughs> but, like, what did she say? Where's mommy? I, I go, she died. Mommy's dead. I look exactly like mommy. Well, that's called genetics. And why did she say, I don't, I don't look like you at all. I don't even look Asian. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to figure it out. Say mommy's dead. Yeah, yeah, mommy's dead. Maybe you're right. I think uh, I think it's more of a problem because I think religious people would freak right. out because it is, then the, yeah. uh, the idea of God, you know, right? The idea of like, 
There's a God. You, you can't really back that up when we can create our own humans. Yeah. Also, the family of that person, what would they think? Right. Right. But, it, I mean, <laughs> but, like, all, all moral issues aside, yeah. it would, it's fascinating. <laughs> it is fascinating. Because and You can clone an animal, but you can't get in their head. Like, you could talk mm-hmm. to a person and understand... Yeah. Yeah. What's going I, on? If you went to Natalie Portman, right, and snuck up behind her, right, <laughs> and then like snipped some hairs, right, 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 and then made fifteen Natalie Portmans without her consent, right, and you had some sort of sex farm, sure, that'd be weird. That'd be fine. <laughs> uh, that'd be fine. Yeah, I think that would be morally wrong, yeah, right? But I think that if you know, maybe you're right. I don't know. I've really thought about it. I mean, it's. It, it, I wonder if it's inevitable. It is inevitable because it's. If it's possible, it's inevitable. Not only that, uh, right? Black Mark will do it. When the Black Mark can do it, yeah. they can do it. And that's also, true. singular. Fuck, dude, you're right. People are going to be buying sex slave Natalie Portman oh, clones. God. Right. Like, oh, one creepy uh, paparazzi is going to snip a little hair, yeah. and that's all you need. Yeah. Oh, God. That's twisted. That's and so it's twisted inevitable. And wrong. And it's inevitable. You wrong. can't wait. How much? How much? Well, how dare cost? you? I would never do that. <laughs> I, I I have a really good foundation. <laughs> how much would it cost for a sex slave Natalie Portman? On the black market. Million bucks? A half a million. Half a million? <laughs> Maybe a million, yeah. Maybe uh, even after a couple of years, the price goes down and you can get her on Walmart. Yeah, but did, you know, if you got one, you'd feel so guilty that you'd be like... Well, you have to be kind of a sociopath to buy it. Yeah. No, I would put her through acting class. Right. Just right? so you want her to be the real deal. Yeah, and then like when Natalie <laughs> Portman gets really old, I'll go, this is the new one. Right. Here's professional too. Right. Right. Fuck. I know. It's weird. But singularity is going to happen. You know that. I'm all about that. <clears throat> uh, let me just say, my, something. Let me say something to you, my yeah. friend. And this is the first time we've ever met. Mm. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with you. Oh I like God. you a lot. But. In fact. Okay. But what you just said there is a little wrong because I'll tell you why. <laughs> what did I do? I want to tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because if singularity happens, inevitably, there's going to be a war between man and machine. So... What side are you on, my friend? Right. Well, yeah, that's a toughie. I'm with it, the because shredder. once, once, yeah, I'm with, I'm once machines go, hey, we were created by man, but we're smarter, and we could rule the world. So I think Elon Musk. I, I was just listening to him talking about it incidentally because he is an alarmist about it. He thinks that we need to be scared about it. I, a, I think so too. I do too, actually. And there's a well, lot of you, there's a lot of scientists who oh. I think you misunderstood what I said. I mean, what I meant is by I'm all about it is that I'm interested in it. Oh, I see what I mean. <laughs> I am look the thing is there's so much potential. So the singularity, when you hit that moment of AI. So you should explain to people what it is first. We've so talked about the singularity it, we've yeah. talked about it a lot, but the singularity is when um super intelligence becomes self aware. Yeah. Right? And then in that moment, it's like what is well, what what happens? You know? West Warren. West yeah. well. So there's a there's Or a, Matrix even. Right, sure. That, that's like the ultimate dystopian yeah, 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 yeah. vision of it. But the reason we're inventing superintelligence, first of all, is incredible. Because you can invent the superintelligent being, or m- intellect, not a being, and say, cure cancer. And it's going to crunch all the numbers. It's going to think about it like no human ever could. And in a week, potentially, depending on how intelligent it is, it can solve every fucking cancer, every yeah. disease. Yeah. And that's what's so incredible about it. The thing that they're doing is they're building prisons for it. They're trying to build it in a way with rules and exceptions in prisons uh, that it can't break out. Uh, so that this is part of the debate that's going on is like, can it break out? Is it a Neville that's going to break out? What happens when it breaks yeah, out? Yeah, but then an anarchist would break into that prison mm-hmm. right, and right. figure it out, you know, and connect <clears throat> it to the world. And then at that point, yeah. it's going to be... It's possible that it already happened. <laughs> And it's already pulling the strings, right? Elon Musk could be just an agent <laughs> of the superintelligence. Like, it could already be happening. If superintelligence was on the loose, maybe it wouldn't even reveal itself. This master plan is already in the works. All the strings are being pulled right now, dude. <laughs> Billions of people, nobody can crunch numbers on that scale except superintelligence. And it's all this shit going on in the world with Trump and <laughs> Syria and Russia. It's all the superintelligent being. <laughs> wiping the way, ready to start anew, right? He's pull- he's crunching the numbers well, well, to end. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. It could have already happened. Good luck. Thanks, man. I'll see you out there in Doomsday. <laughs> but that's the truth, right? It could already be plugged into the internet. Maybe. I hate talking about it because it makes me feel so helpless. Like, if 
like I, our my personal brain would be so far behind whatever is going well, on. Well, everyone's would be. I don't even know. I can't even read. You know, you know, you know the clocks with the little hands. <laughs> right. I can't right. even read that. It's yeah, got to be digital, or I have no idea what time it is. Right. I feel like I just because if there's no digital, right? People go, "What time is that?" I'd be like, "It's this." <laughs> right. Right. I don't know. Right. So imagine that. Right. I mean, I'm I'm definitely uh, gonna be just. A pod guy. I'll yeah. be in a pod, yeah. right? It, the juice, the you juice know, on me, pod juice on me. Yeah, and eating a steak in the Matrix, which isn't yeah. that bad. I don't know why they're so complaining about it. <laughs> right. Like, there's that one scene in the Matrix where he's like, the steak is dank. Why would I want to go back there? And it's like, that's true. That's kind of right. And especially, I thought about if I was like Neo and I could manipulate things, right. I'd stay in that world. I just, I'd rule it. I just fuck like crazy all day. Yeah, yeah. I just eat steak. <laughs> I just eat steak. <laughs> <and fuck. laughs> yeah, fuck so the hard. Matrix Five. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> if, if if we were in the if, like, let me say this. If let's say we realized we were in a Matrix, right. would you let him sex have sex with other people? Well, what's the difference? We're still our emotions are still real, right? Oh, that's true. Man. The love Damn is it. real, my Damn dog. It. The love is real. <laughs> my bad. No, but the but, love's real. No, no, no. But would you? No, I, I okay. thought you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. we're on the yeah, same yeah, page. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, so Elon Musk put it eloquently. By the way, just to sum up this whole thing, I th- I like the way he says it. He says it's not that the robots hate us. It's not that they are going to go out of their way to destroy us, but more like how we consider an ant hill when we're building a road. We don't hate ants, but we have no problem clearing them out mm-hmm. so we can build a road. And that's that's how I much mean, that's the scariest thing I've ever <laughs> fucking so heard in my life. And that <laughs> and they're so like a super hate... intelligent being is so far above anything we can understand. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of how they see us, right? It's now you know what we should learn from that and not destroy ant hills. <laughs> right. That's we should go around it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's send a message to the robot. Yeah, no, yeah. Spare us. <laughs> yeah, spare us. <laughs> wow, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. It really is. It's 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 real interesting because it's could it has the potential to be the greatest thing, the yeah. the best invention ever. Yeah. Right. And also like, the doom of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm all into like nanobots like going inside us and like mm-hmm. you know clearing out sickle cell anemia if I have it. Mm-hmm. Do what do you think I have it? Isn't that a, I mean, I don't, it's a, mo, like, black people have it, right? But I want it. You what want it? Yeah, I want, to, I want the first Asian, I want to be the first Asian that? to get it sick, sickle cell anemia. It's a weird, it's And then weird. they go, it's only black. I go, not me. It's a, it's a weird thing that only black people get. What yeah. is it? It makes you, so it's a weird, strange thing. It makes you immune to malaria, but it also gives you all kinds of other weird shit. Yeah. What does it do to you? I don't know. I just know that only because I've never had it. Yeah, I just know that African Americans get it. So you are a bug chaser. <laughs> what? Yeah. Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> bug chasing this comes up way too often on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bug chasing is somebody who wants to be infected with the disease, specifically HIV. Why would anybody want that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. I guess the theory is that they want to feel it's a it's kind of a gay thing and so they want to feel connected with like more connected with the community. Uh, it's like a self harm thing. It's, it's like s- Asians wanting a little dick so you can connect with the other Asians. <laughs> exactly. You understand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not little. <laughs> it's black, though, incidentally. Or at least now, black and green. Here's another thing. Can, can I defend the Asian dick thing, though, real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Just any, because, you know, you guys got to have a lot of listeners. I want to educate people. Okay? Yeah, let us know. Mm-hmm. It's not that we have small penises, okay? It's, it's, your, your dick is the same size as your body or proportion of your body. Sure. So if you look at someone like Yao Ming, it's not like his dick is like a clit. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got like a regular size dick for his size. Which is like... It's like this like, he... yellow little like right. dot. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. It's just, you know, stereotype, you know, whatever. But I think that because I'm small, I'm going to have... I'm not going to have a monster dick on this body. Right. That's all. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. So you're saying that generally people think the Asians have small dicks because generally I hate they're just that a little. They're, they're like a big but, uh, yeah, That's really stupid. That's a dumb stereotype. Mm. Because let me say, Tokyo Drift. Explain, that. <laughs> guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Explain. You just Tokyo close Drift. the case <laughs> a whole bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did they say about Jews? Oh, what don't they say about Jews? Exactly. What are the stereotypes that you know about Jews? <laughs> Let's answer those. The, the, I, I feel bad because I don't agree yeah, with no, them. Give it all. I want to hear it. I want to hear them anyway. Yeah, same all. Um, that you guys are um, with money. Right. Cheap. Greedy. Cheap and greedy with money. I'll say of some Jews, I know that's true. 
But I, but that's also true of but some I, yeah, other people. I, I know, that I know equally the same amount of people who are greedy that aren't Jewish. And they also say Koreans are the Jews of the Orient. Have you heard of that? <laughs> I have, and yeah, I don't know what it means. What an I, insult. I, what an insult. It's not an insult. <laughs> to me, that's a great know. thing. It's because <laughs> why we're hardworking and we're smart and we can, like, God we know God. about finance. I've but. heard it and I honestly didn't know what it meant. Yeah, like, it's what? meant as an insult, surely. Right? Yeah, yeah, surely it is meant for, but I don't look, I've never even looked at it as an insult. I'm like, yeah, we're like Jews. That's good. Because look, I mean, look. Okay, I want to defend Korea for a second because people talk about like North Korea, oh Kim Jong Un, mm-hmm. and I, I'm tired of when, when white people walk up to me and go, "Hey, uh, are you North or South Korean?" <laughs> it's yeah. so fucking stupid. Dumb. South Definitely Korea is North. a beautiful place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, South Korea is like incredible, beautiful place. Oh, so look at we're half a peninsula, and I want to defend Korea a little bit. Yeah, what that little we only we don't even have the full country. We have half of this right. tiny peninsula, and we have Samsung, Adam <laughs> <laughs> Hyundai. Oh, we have huge corporations for a little half a peninsula. We're doing pretty good. We're the head of cloning tech technology. Great fabrics, Spooky. right? Too. Great fabrics. Yeah, Says that, that, that's where Meryl Streep was. It Meryl Streep that got the cloning of the dogs? Who was it? Oh, what, was it, it was. Uh, it wasn't Meryl Streep. It was God. I just said her name. I didn't hear you. Old um, white, yeah, yeah. rich lady. Streisand. We gotta forget. We can't. Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand. Barbara. Barbara. Did she do it here or she went to Korea? Probably. Right? I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you can do that here. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's a little dicey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little dicey out here. No, I love. I've, I, I've been into esports. I love video games, and so I was playing what Star. Play? Cr- yeah, I have a game. What do you play? So, well, when I got into whole like Korean culture was when I was playing StarCraft Two. Wow. And Dota. Wow. You're really into it then, dude. Mm-hmm. I have two thousand hours clocked on Dota Two. You do? And about the same on StarCraft Two. You know what I play? What do you game? Stardew Valley. <laughs> and that's that like farming Stardew thing? Valley. That's the new one, right? You making fun of me? No, no, no. <laughs> I played that shit for like 20 hours. It's a farming c- Yeah, yeah it's that farming. That's I'm just trying to understand. It's the one that's out on switch. Yes I played it for 20 hours. I enjoyed it, but it was a certain point where I was like um, no. my farm's pretty dope No, it wasn't dope enough <laughs> Well, that's the you got the bug. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you why it's so amazing Okay. <laughs> Until you get the golden clock Ain't nothing. The golden clock? <laughs> yeah, see, you don't even know about the what clock. What does the golden <laughs> clock do for you? <laughs> because I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this guy, Eric Baroni, developed this game called Stardew Valley. I'm just going to... Start pl- from the oh, top. Wow. I'm starting from the top. Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, he was by himself. He, was, he had a wife who worked. He didn't work. And he just, in his apartment, he lived in Seattle. And he created his own independent game, you know, called... Stardew Valley. It was based on, because he had this obsession with Harvest Moon. Right. Mm. We're growing up. So basically what it is, is that it's not just a um, farming simulation game. You can um, go in the mines, you, you fight I monsters. Lo- I did do that, and I loved it. Right? You can fish as well. Mm. You can fish? Really? Yeah, you can fish. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. And so it's not just fishing, though, too. It's like, you could, there's legendary fish you can catch and whatnot. Oh. But here's the thing about it, is that there's a wizard in the forest. Did you know that? <laughs> I didn't. There's a wizard in the forest. Enc- there's a wizard in the forest, yeah, right? I encountered him. And once you have a relationship with him, there's storylines with him, and then eventually you can buy things from him. <laughs> and one of the things that you can buy from him, and the most expensive thing, is a golden clock. Golden, oh. I was gonna guess. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and what you do with the golden clock is it's ten million dollars. So it's Whoa. I know so you have to grind hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> but when you get it, it, it's great because you put it on your farm, and there's no more debris. No more debris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like, oh, so I know what debris is. It, when the shit grows and all that. It saves you a bunch of time. Let me guess, you got that golden clock, didn't you? There's no fucking debris on your farm, is there, boy? Debris less. <laughs> That's I have no debris. What, Shredder, that? what happened? <laughs> uh, it makes me want to try the game. It's, I think it's, you would like it. Yeah. I think you would love it. And let me say something. It's grinding, but it's the fun kind of grinding. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where there's always goals. Like, I need to make truffle oil. Right. <laughs> right? Or it's like, I need to, there's this thing called rare seed. I need to harvest more rare seeds so I can make more money and whatnot. Mm. So there's a lot to do. And um, I just really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to love it. I, want, I, I put in 20 hours. I wanted to love it, but something just held me back. I think in general, in the past five years, I found myself enjoying video games less. Really? Because I have this feeling that I should be doing something else. And it ruins the games for me. And you it's see, awful. You don't know. Let me say something to you, my friend. I didn't always have that. And that's how it clocked you 2,000 hours. You, know? you manifest things in your life. You know that, right? Tell me more. I need help, dude. What else? I'm going to tell you a little story about me, okay, okay, my friend? Yeah. If you ask any comedian, I'm the laziest of them all. Mm. <laughs> I don't write. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't eat well. Mm-hmm. 
You know, I'm I'm on the border of death. I think <laughs> I am. You're rotting from I'm the rotting feet up right now. Yeah, from the feet up. <laughs> yeah. I don't exercise. I don't shower. I don't do much. Okay, mm-hmm. but a lot of good things have happened in my life. Do you know why? Why is that? I visualize. I and can't. I believe, and I believe. Mm. And well, if you, you don't have belief, you have nothing. You were just saying uh, before we went on that you were in a little fender bender and you were visualizing your way out of it, right? Yeah. I do that a lot. I try to think positive thoughts, mm-hmm. right? And things, the outcome of things are going to be great for me. How do you explain that? I'm going to explain it you to you right really, now. You really like visualize what it would be, like what it is that you want. Exactly. Yeah. I'll give you an example, okay? On Barham Boulevard, right? If you go around that bend, you drive by... Um, Warner Brothers Studio. Mm. And in Warner Brothers Studio, they have these gigantic billboards of their shows. Mm-hmm. Okay? So it's like, and every time I drove by there, I would be haunted by like, you know, these posters. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, I want to be on a Warner Brothers show. Mm-hmm. So you I were could, haunted because you wanted to be on it? Because it, it caused it me a like lot of a, pain. It was a reminder. Because, I, because all my friends it. were on it, right? And I'm right, like, right. oh. Yeah. So I wanted to be on a billboard there, right? So that I can cause my enemies pain. Right. <laughs> No, that's reason. the only reason why to be on you, the show. You want to be grinning up there on all yeah, these yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, lizards. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I want like I have a lot of enemies. I have like ten of them. Oh, that is a lot. Yeah, yeah, and I want them to be stuck in traffic there, and then see my billboard there, or, like me on a billboard, grinning, and ha- yeah, and going, hey, you know what I mean? right. it's happening for me, right? right, right. And to cause them, <laughs> right? Wonderful. So I try to visualize myself. Do you visualize them suffering, or you on the billboard? Both. <laughs> that sounds that sounds positive to me. Yeah, really positive, right? <laughs> that sounds healthy. We're very healthy, right? <laughs> it's revenge in a spiritual way. I love right, it, right? right? Right. And so then what happened was, um, I got on a warner. I don't know if I, they haven't had. There's no billboard there yet, but it could happen. I You're think on the we, way. we have a Warner. I'm on a Warner Brothers show that they own, and and guess how that show happened? How? I visualized it. <laughs> so okay, L- listen. They called. I didn't even audition. They just called me one day and they go, do you want to be on this? They offered you this thing. And I go, mm-hmm. yeah, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> this is happening. My, my grand, sk- my plan is happening. <laughs> did you tell them that? Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this is no, no, they're like, plan. okay. <laughs> and then I did the table read. I did the pilot. It got picked up <laughs> and now it's on. So let me, let me. Congrats. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> first of all, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Really, that's great. Th- thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so. Do you meditate on this? Like, how does the visualization take when place? When I'm playing Stardew Valley, <laughs> you split your yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'll, like, no, because you know when pumpkins are growing, you know how pumpkins grow. In you you, you life plant no in the game. In the game, you, you plant. You sleep. You go in. You come out. They grow a little bit. Yeah, like, right, right. So when I'm watching, I'll sometimes just watch the screen and just stare at my pumpkin patches. I gotta right? play it now. You're gonna love it. You'll love it. It sounds almost like more meditative than. I mean, as much meditative as game. Yes. You sort out all your issues. Yeah. I also have visualized, like, because they're like little pixelated characters. Mm -hmm. But I I also visualize little sexual things with the people in the village. Jesus Christ. Is there a billboard of you on WB and (laughs) your farm? Yeah, there will be. (laughs) Looking down on all your Yeah, looking down on all my (laughs) other villagers, yes. But um, sometimes I'll go, I'll be playing it and I'll just be just looking at my farm and I'll visualize things, you Mm. know? So that's all. So, but no, but so do you do you just hold on to the image, or do you think about like things happening? You know, I you know I'm, I'm half joking, but I, I'll be. This is the real because, honest. Well, okay. I'm going to tell you the honest yeah, truth because I know. Okay, I'm going to tell you the honest yeah. truth. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and then um, you I, could because I don't want people to think that I'm a fucking asshole. <laughs> okay. All right, the honest truth is this: is that yes, I'm lazy, right? But I also be, uh, there is a be, there is a thing that I do where I believe that. Things are gonna happen it's for me. It's belief. It's, yeah, it's, it's just I, I just believe it. Yeah. And then you know I, I'll still show up to auditions and I'll show up to things and I don't stress about uh, stress out about things and things just kind of they happen. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's because I've always been like that. I think in retrospect, where I just kind of why would you why would I continue to do something horrible like open mics mm. for like seven eight years mm-hmm. of struggling if I didn't believe. Right. That something was going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the same with you. You do it. Mm-hmm. I think that this podcast is something that you manifested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you do it as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I relate to that. And I that. think the, the... I think you manifested her. Look what a beautiful wife. She's bright. She's foreign. <laughs> she's got exotic well, tendencies, you know? I love it. Yeah, she does have exotic <laughs> <Thank> tendencies. <you. laughs> um, 
Yeah, I get. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I I, I worked my ass off for this one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't, don't think you did though. You did, bro. You did? I put in the work. A well, guy like, like this. What are we talking about earlier? Like, what I mean, did he do? Well, I just didn't. I I pursued. He, I didn't think it would it would be an option for me because I was in Israel and he was here. Right. So I was like completely like didn't even. You didn't even think about didn't it. Didn't even think about and it. And then what but happened for him to sway you? He he kept uh, like <laughs> we started talking on Skype, but it was it was just very I don't know persistent. I don't That's know. That's right. He but kind of kept he, going and going. Yeah. It's just like see when you know you. Know. I think there's he had a he yeah, had a lot of moments to just give up, but he didn't. Mm-hmm. So I did have a feeling of like rightness in it. I don't know what this means. What does this mean? It's something. <laughs> but there was a reason that I pursued it. You know, because when you meet, because people are like snowflakes. They're right. all individuals. Right. And, and when you see the snowflake of your heart. Right. <laughs> can I say that? You absolutely can <laughs> right? say that. The snowflake you need of my to heart. Pursue that snowflake with all your might and your mm. energy. When I matched with Kalila on Tinder. I liked her legs, mm. and I like her eyeballs. Really? Yeah. And I went, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and when I met her, face to face, we sat at a coffee shop. I go, this is going to be it. I can feel it. I need to really? this. Really? Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Five, Five years. years now. Oh, my God. God bless. You don't listen, do you? <laughs> Some, no, a lot of times it's just, I'm just staring at it. Yeah. I like your eyebrows. You do? <laughs> They're thick and thin at the same time. Thank you. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't like them. Don't do that. It's out. Yeah. Compliment yeah. rescinded. Do that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's me. Um, what's up? I don't know. I got well, distracted by the eyebrows. There's a guy. lot to the visualizing that I think is true. Where it it sounds kind of weird at first, but when you think about it, it's just really being focused on something. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, because I you know I was always that's in, true. Yeah. And I was always a negative guy. Like, I, you know, I've been to four re drug rehabs in my life. I've been struggling with drug addiction. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I was younger, I was suicidal. And mm -hmm. and then I think when I got sober in my early 20s, I mean, I got in my teens, my late teens, and I stayed sober, I realized that there's got to be something to this. Like, because my life right mm -hmm. now is just so dark and mm -hmm. negative, and I'm not yeah. getting money, and I have no dreams, mm -hmm. that I just shifted my mental Hmm. You know, the way I perceived. Hmm. How did life. you do that? How did you accomplish something? And that's that's a feat. Well, I I, I think I, because you know the, there's a thing in like if you're at twelve step groups, people think everything you know because you believe in this concept of God, right? So then you kind of think, um, you know, you know, you know, there's a step in it. The third step was you turn your life and your will over to the care of God, right? Mm -hmm. So you practice that at first, right? Mm -hmm. You go. And so in your head, if you think that there is this loving God, not Jesus, I don't believe in Jesus, mm -hmm. but you believe that there's this Something. entity and energy that wants good things, then you have to use it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when I started like really kind of going, you know what, I'm going to try this thing of like um, praying. Mm -hmm. And also I was at an, a meeting once and this old man came up to me and there's this place called North Park Men's Meeting. It was on mm -hmm. a Friday night. And I went and I spoke at this thing, right? And then afterwards, this old man, I never saw him before or after th this. And he goes, hey, kid, there's something about you. You should do comedy. Really? And I go, what? And yeah. that was the catalyst? And I go, and he goes, you should just try to do some sort of amateur night or something. <laughs> he pulled me aside to say this to me, <laughs> right? And in my head, you can look at that incident and go, ah, oh, it's just some random old right. crazy man. Yeah. Or the way I looked at it was, this is some sort of a sign. This is a sign. <laughs> so, an, an unbelievable thing. An unbelievable thing happened. I was working at a coffee shop. This is like four or five months after the, I ran into this man, and the coffee shop closed. But right next door was a comedy club, mm. and I went next door to get a. I, you know, there was a help wanted sign. Another mm. sign mm -hmm. in my head. Yeah. It could be just a random coincidence. <laughs> right. But I don't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Something. So I knocked on yeah. the door, and this guy answered. He said, "What do you want?" It was like the manager of the club. I go, "There's a sign, you know, that says that you need a bar back." <laughs> All right, oh, you're the guy from next door. I go, "Yeah." He goes, <laughs> "All right." And then I saw open, and then I was washing dishes, and I saw the open mic night one night, mm. and I went, "You know, I want to try it." <laughs> mm. Right. So everything <laughs> you know, remembered that one. Yeah. Guy. So what I'm just saying is, is that you could look at life. 
as a series of coincidences mm-hmm. and you know but i don't look at life like that i believe that you and i us three we're meant to be here at this moment. Wow. And we're here to get I really do believe that. That's and that's why specific. I'm here. Right. And that's why I, I'm 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 enjoying myself. Me too, by the way. God, God bless you. you. God bless you. God bless you. God. That's a great story. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I think that it's like grace. I don't know. It's like uh it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, when things like that, like I'll give you one that last example of it. Mm-hmm. There was this woman, oh, I was working in the back door at the comedy store, I was a doorman in mm-hmm. Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I was broke. And I was work, I was checking IDs, and there was a lady there. Her name was Anne, mm-hmm. and she would look confused. And I go, "Can I help you?" And she's like, "I hate this club. I don't know how to get in this club." And I go, "What's your name?" She goes, "My name's Anne." And I go, "You know what? I'm gonna sneak you in the back." I snuck her in. I bought her a glass of wine. That I I don't know why, but I just mm-hmm. want to be nice to another human being. And she goes, at the end of the night, she goes, "Hi, I'm an agent." Whoa. And I go, yeah, but that's not what happened. Okay. And then she goes, but anyway, my name is Ann, and um, what's your name? My name is Bobby Lee. She said, you're a comedian. I go, yeah. And then when I tested for Matt TV, she was an executive there. What? And she remembered you. Oh my now, God. I don't know if that had, it's all, yeah, if that yeah. had anything to do with it, this and that. But it didn't hurt. In my head, it's all connected in that way. You know? Wow, that's really cool. And now uh, probably all of your listeners are probably thinking that I'm a fraud nope. and that no. I'm a deceiver and I live in black magic, but I don't. <laughs> I don't you know think what I mean? I, I believe else. that what I'm saying, is there is some sort of foundation and truth to it. So when you think of God, how do you imagine that being that, that, that gave you the grace to... I, I, I to... can't believe that. I cannot believe that like Catholicism or Judaism, or they all have separate gods. I have to believe that... It, at the end of the day, it's all one thing, all right? And people are just calling it a different thing. I think that I don't know what it is. I don't, th- I don't, I don't have a religious doctrine that I read, like the Bible or the, mm-hmm. you know, or the Book of Mormon or, mm-hmm. you know. When you pray, do you speak to some? No, I just, I just kind of go, I just believe in some, um, this, an energy that's mm. positive and that wants pretty much good things that's a, for me. I like that. Yeah, but it, like it, it, I could be completely wrong. Well, what does it matter? It, what, yeah, what's what's but wrong? I really right? do. I really do believe it, and I'm not changing my belief. Mm-hmm. Okay, I really love the idea of not like a god. Like the, I've always found the idea of like the, the. It's more abstract. It's not like a character. Yeah, right. I'm, what right, you're saying. It, I love what I, what you just right. said. Yeah. Instead. I've always found the idea of like a god who's just like perched up in the sky, like jerking off and fucking throwing lightning. He doesn't do that. He probably he, he probably he does. Off. He doesn't. <laughs> that's weird. Well, he's all about fucking. Well, who's he jerking off weird. to? <laughs> devil? The devil? I mean, what is he? Natalie Portman is. It? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Natalie Portman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a guy. It was created in his image. He created a woman from his own ribs so that he could fuck it. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> but point is, I've always found the idea of, of a. <laughs> I'll be fine. I've been bossing you're, you're for a while. Be, yeah, <laughs> you'll be fine. But that, I mean, even jokes like that, I'm fine with because the thing is, I don't believe in that religious. Right. What? Right. I, but, yeah, yeah. Ma- yeah. The main point is that this guy who's like judging you and thinking yeah, about you is just. Yeah. It seems. How can you go through your life living that there's some guy who's just like judging everything you do? Like I kind of did because I grew up a little orthodox in a way. Yeah. And I really, my only feeling about it now is just how stupid it is because it just plants this fear in you all the time. What were you, like, were you what thinking? am I doing wrong today? Really? Like, yeah. oh shit, I ate dairy after I ate meat. God is not going to forgive me. You had thoughts like that? Yeah. At one point? Wow. Because there's like, you got to wait six hours according to some people, but some people will wait three hours. And then some people will only wait one hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it, it's that nitpicky. It's like, what's the? Tr- why would like, he care yeah. if I waited six hours or three hours? Yeah. And at that point, why does he care at all? Well, and right, the biblical God is such a vain, like insecure weirdo. Yeah, that it's like, who? Why would I even want to please this fucking lunatic? Yeah, I don't. Why would he create? Like, also, it's like the whole, like the whole gay thing. In Judaism, is are gays persecuted or are they? Accepted. Um, I don't think they're accepted. Uh, yeah. Well, so there's different tiers to yeah, it. Like in Israel, there's like, it's all good to be gay, but not in the Orthodox. The Orthodox don't like the gays. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just all that st- that all yeah. that negative. Like we, it's weird. It's like you know. It's like 
I, I, I can't I can't buy it and I, right. I can't live by it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just love all I think, you know. But I love the idea of just like a positive force that like wants good and just acknowledging. Yeah, and I, I, I could be good. delusional and I could be wrong, but I will not change, you know. And I, and, and don't get don't get me wrong, I get suicidally depressed. Do you? Even oh yeah, yeah. Day. I'll wake up and go, oh my god, here's life again. Mm. And I'll have this weight and this hole in my gut and I can feel like, you know, an emptiness. Right? But I have to do things Right to, I can't just stay in that. Yeah. Right, right. I have to do things like I'll try to help somebody, or mm. like mm. you know, that's another thing. Is is that, and this is going to sound crazy, but I believe that the root of happiness is to get out of yourself mm. and to help another he- fellow human being. Mm. And it, it, the way I do it is, I do it in the co- business of comedy. I. You know, I don't want to, I, I have a lot of character defects and I'm not the, a perfect human being. But the one thing that I am good at is I've helped a lot of comics. Hmm. Like if a comic needs to get an agent, I'll try to help. Mm-hmm. Or mm. they want to try to get into a club, I'll try to help. Mm. You know, um, I've had a couple of friends that were really good comics that wanted to be at the agency I'm at. I call the agency and go, hey, you really have to sign these two guys, mm. you know. <laughs> so, you, you know, I do things, I feel like, to try to help yeah. people. I don't think that, you know, here's what I, here's the thing that I have to get over. And this is something that I have helped a couple of guys and they just would never help me back. <laughs> and then I get kind of resentful and I have to get <laughs> then you over that like, because right. I have to realize that it was I'm, a pure act. The first the, act, the act yeah. is pure yeah. and I can't, I can't do the act <laughs> right. for, to you expect, expect something, something in return. In return yeah. Right. And that's difficult it's for me. Not, to do. You have to be, it you is. have to be like enlightened, you know, but there's we're, some we're... selfish fucks out there. I just want to get this out of my chest. Right. right. Where I've, there's a couple of people where I've loaned a lot of money to and really big, big really? names wow. and they won't pay me back. Who are like, wow. who are huge who, who are on billboards. Yes. That's not But cool. just FYI, you know, I gave you the money just because I love you. You want to drop Good a luck. name just to let them I know? There's no they way. know. It'll cause, us, it'll cause a war. They know though. They know who they are. They don't know who they are. Oh, they don't even know who they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been like, okay, because if you're upset at someone, you owe it to them in a way to be like, hey, I just want to let you know that I have all this hatred in my heart. I play video games and I fantasize about you being stuck. I, I think I would do. I think I would do that if I needed the money. <laughs> okay. If I if I if I loan, but it's not about the money, right? In a it's way, it's not about that. Yeah. It's principle. But here's the thing: is is that how I much th- money are we talking about? Can I ask that? A couple grand. Okay. Yeah. Enough that it's like, what the fuck? You're a millionaire now. We're talking, right? That's what yeah. We're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's one person. They're killing it. I'm not gonna even say what the gender. I'm not gonna ask. Right. Uh, yeah, don't even don't, ask the. Yeah. It's a female, obviously. Yeah. If you would say that, <laughs> don't ask the gender, because it's obviously. God, what are you a crafty? <laughs> <laughs> That's very crafty. No, it's a guy. <laughs> All right. It's a fucking guy. Okay. All right. So it's this dude. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, this dude is killing it. Right. Um, and if I was broke. Right. I would walk up to this guy. Yeah. And go, hey, remember I helped you pay rent that that bunch of times? I, I'm really not doing well. I, I kind of need the money back. But because I'm fine and I'm killing it, yeah, that I'm just willing to, to eat it and just, you know, if they it's one, not worth if they one up, day yeah. want to go, here's the money back, I'll even go like this. You know what? I don't even want it back. Yeah. I just <laughs> but want thanks, but thank thanks you. for you yeah. offering to pay back. Right. <laughs> I wonder if they think in their mind, they're like, Bobby Lee's killing it. He's giving this he to me as care. a gift. As as he's just trying to help me out, or was the pretense like you got to pay me back when you're good for it? Because it's possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that wasn't clear. So in that way, also, you're right. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's fine. I'm fine. But do, okay, but do, so do you feel like maybe they didn't appreciate that gesture, and now that they're like on billboards, well, do uh, they? Are they here's sh- where one time. Yeah. And I'm not going to name the guy. Don't and name the, the guy. Yeah, sure. I can even g- give you that information. I believe you on this one. This motherfucker. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. There's a couple of guys. I'm going to get my grievances out. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I want to hear about it. There's this one guy, right? I'm going to say his first name. Okay. John. Okay. Interesting. Okay. His name is John. Where, what country That's is he from? America. Okay. He's an American. <laughs> okay. All so right. he knows. Mid, Mid-America. He knows. Mid-America. Right. What state? <laughs> What's Ohio. his last Ohio. name? Ohio. I'm not going to give you the last name. <laughs> Do a search right. so Ian back the there thing. for Here's John's the from Ohio. This guy, right, was an open micer. Yeah. All right. 
And one day he, he had no money. And one day, this is years ago, he said, I need, I want to take acting classes, but I have no money. Right? And I go, you know what? You want acting classes? You're a good guy and you're very talented. I will pay for those acting classes. Mm. Mm-hmm. And this motherfucker became famous. Mm. Okay? Mm. And one day I'm walking by him at the comedy club. You guys parted ways. No. But, you know. Just moved on. Yeah, no, you, no, you, you made it, and we were still friends. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. But one day he goes, hey, let me tell you something. This is years after I, right? And he never paid me back. It's fine. I'm fine over it. And I was fine with it, but then he goes, I just want to let you know you're not a real comedian. Wow. What? I go, what? And he goes, yeah, you're just a guy that was on TV, and you got lucky, and now you get spots. Hmm. I and I walked what... by him, and I wanted to gouge his eyes out. But why would why you, would say, you that? say that? I don't know, but he became Where did that really, like, toxic. Here's what, some people, when they, when they struggle, and then they finally make it, they become like Joffrey, King Joffrey from... It could be that he Game hated, you know, he hated everyone mm. the whole time, but he was using them, so he had to put on a face, right? That's what it is. And they, now they, they, their true freedom. self was hidden, right? Wow. right? And then they se- finally get... A piece of power and freedom, and they just start lashing out, right? I don't like dudes like that. That's it's, insane yeah, to that's say crazy. that to. All right, John from Middle of America. <laughs> Who is that? I'm gonna tell you. I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> I don't want to start a war. It's uh, yeah, well, anyone who knows. To start, yeah. I don't want to start a war. I gave you enough clues, <laughs> right? Not to start a war, but still, there's a little bit of interest so out there, everyone. right? <laughs> okay. You know th- these things. You know that his name is John. Right. You know that he's from mid America. Right. You know he's a comedian. Right. And that's all it's done. That, okay. That's it. Okay. That's okay. all you get. All right. Those are the clues. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not starting a war. <laughs> okay. Got Here's it. another one. I'm going to do one last one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and this one, I can even get more specific. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. His name is Kevin. Right. He's. Okay. Age, I mean, can I say it's eight years in, in no t- What you're saying, some kind of Asian <laughs> thing, right? I didn't say that, okay, but <laughs> okay, okay. Got you. and I helped him out and he betrayed me. <laughs> Your life is like the is, is, but that's it, okay. But you, his name's Kevin, and you know, how did he betray you? Yeah, what's a betrayal? Well, he, he pushed me at a comedy club, pushed you, he, yeah, he was drunk. And he walked up to me. I was at a table with some friends. And this is what he said to me. He goes, look at you. I go, what? He goes, you know, Dr. Ken Jung, he's doing so much better than you. How does it feel to not be a star anymore? Right? Just, he was drunk. Why, and he said what's that wrong me. with, why, what's with all these psychopaths? I know. So then, what, you know what, I, I walked up to him at the improv. And I go, why did you say that to me, buddy? <laughs> you know? And he pushed me. What? He shoved you? Yeah. But to His name is Kevin, and he has this. Right. And he's a comedian. Okay. That's all That's all I'm going to say. That's enough information, I feel like, to identify somebody. That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> At, did I just start some wars? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm sweating now. <laughs> <laughs> you were sweating before. You know, if these two characters, you know, me want to have a little coffee with me and we could just smooth it out, mm-hmm. I'd be willing to do that. Hmm. That's grace. But, okay, so if I can tear... I feel like to get to the point where you're willing to shove somebody, I feel like you... Did you not do any offense to this guy? Uh, Well, here's the offense. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like you're not... You're leaving something out. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to tell you what it is. Yeah, what did you do to the guy? I did a tour with him. Yeah. Okay? I'm here, yep. I'm not going to name the tour. Okay. Right, and at that time, the people that were on the tour, I was the only name on the tour because mm. I had been on Mad TV for so long, mm-hmm. right? And so they paid me more, mm-hmm. but it was a four-man tour. Mm-hmm. But you were the headline. No, we were all okay. equal, equal in it. But Why I demanded more me? money because okay. I was at that time the draw. You okay? Mm-hmm. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Yep. And apparently some people got resentment that I got 60% of the money. That's a lot. I should have taken less. Mm. And, I, oh. and, I, and, I, and you know what? I feel guilty. I feel guilty for taking so much money. And um, in retrospect, if, you know, 
I would do it over again. I would take way less, and mm. I apologize. This okay? is like, mending. but don't push me. Yeah. at a comedy club and humiliate me in front of people. Sure, is all I'm saying. Kevin, if you're out there, this is we're his name bending. Is not Kevin. His name is whatever. But if you're whatever, Ke- I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, whatever. His name is Kevin, but it's fine. Whoever's out there who knows who you are. Yeah. We're mending bridges here. And what about the That's first what, one? And what, I feel like, was there an offense in the first case as well? No, he just went on. That guy's power just crazy. a lunatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if that relationship will ever mend because. Um, well, I mean, there's no turning back. The dog is, wants to leave. I, I think yeah. he needs to go potty. Yeah. He's such a cutie pie. He's a cute dog. God, he's the best. What kind is that? Yorkshire? Yeah. Terrier? Yeah. Yorkie. Yeah, yeah. Aww, he doesn't so want to. He doesn't want to leave us though. But he doesn't want to leave. He doesn't want to leave us because he's such a fucking sweep. I thank yeah, you guys. Take him outside. Um, Did but, I reveal too much on this podcast? I feel like I don't know something about you guys. Was powerful. No, was something a, about you too. Like we changed, that makes me want to just keep I revealing feel like something things happened. about myself. I feel like something beautiful happened. Well, I yeah. think that you revealed stuff, but you also took blame where you needed. Right. And I took blame. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you met some crazy people too. You've been through some shit, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know what? Here's the thing. At the end of the day, okay? At the end of the day, and this is something that other comedians should hear me say, is is that you you can't be loved. Not everyone's gonna love you. That's that's it's not it's everyone's gonna hard. love you. Yeah. And you know Mitzi Shore, you know who that is? I'm sorry, I don't I'm so Okay, bad. so the comedy store is owned by Mitzi Shore. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've Polly heard Shore's the name. mom. Right. Oh. And in this, you know, they did a movie, they're doing a TV show that called I'm Dying Up Here. It's about pretty much Mitzi. Oh. Huh. But back in the day when I was um, living in San Diego, um, I knew Mitzi. She's still alive, but she's, she's lost her mind. Sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we used to drive her around. I've had dinner with her a bunch of times. And one night, she looked at me, and this is when she was coherent and clear. And she looked at me and she said, You, wanna, you know what makes a star? I go, what? Half the people have to love you, but equally half the people have to hate you at the same time. Mm. And I go, wow, that's interesting. Look at Roseanne. (laughs) People want her dead, but people love her. Because both things causes, one causes controversy, Mm -hmm. but you want people to just to talk about you. So in many, yeah, and you know, so in, there's only a few people, if you think about it, that are completely beloved only. I think, Tom Hanks right. yeah. is one guy <laughs> that, a rare, he's a rare entity where, <laughs> right. he, but look, you look at someone like Jim Carrey, right? Oh, yeah. He's so polarizing. These days, yeah. especially. I right. Mean, always true. No, I think even before his, he was That's, so broad yeah, and so before, hammy yeah. that but, some people don't like that co- right. style of comedy. Yeah. When you say that, one of my idols or and <laughs> even our inspiration for the show is Howard Stern. Yeah. And he was like mm-hmm. hated passionately. But that's what you need, I think, to become a real star. Hmm. It's so hard to accept it, though. Like the hate, the hate comment. It, it, the, well, last you week, know. my Tuesday night, my fucking show air uh, second time, right? And s- some guy tweeted at me, "You're the worst actor. You should be recast." <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And that destroyed me. It's, it's and it's just hard. some asshole. It's some kid on Twitter. I nearly almost never left the house again. Right. I laid in bed, and Kalela was out of town, so I had to just. Re- I was reading it on my own, and I closed my eyes. And so, in those moments, it's hard to manifest positive thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get paranoid. Yeah. I go, I'm terrible. Right. You know, I should kill myself. Right. But then you, you, I called a couple of people, and then <laughs> they straighten it out. You know, you talk, you, you call your friends. Does this happen to you? It happens to me. I fi- and I'm and I'm trying to break this cycle because it's so sick. Like I'll get a hundred really like passionate, loving, yeah. wonderful, encouraging comments. Yeah. And then one guy that says something like that, and that's the one that you don't forget. Yeah. I, because you know what it is. They're 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 banging on your own paranoid fears about yourself. Right. And then, because you're almost looking for someone to verify mm-hmm. your own fear. Yeah, that's what it is. And you're like, I knew it. Even though everyone's like, I love, I loved you. And yeah. then you're like, I knew it. I'll do a show on the road and I'll kill, mm-hmm. but I'll walk off and go, I just ate it. Mm-hmm. And they'll go, why? You killed. I know, but that lady. That one. <laughs> that one lady that's lady. sitting there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And she doesn't like me because I, you know, I showed my pubic hair. 
right? She, uh, religiously, she doesn't. Sure. You know, she support didn't come that. for face yeah. pubes. Yeah, yeah. I have straight pubes. Is that weird? I don't think if they don't curl. <laughs> the thing weird. is, that's funny. It's not weird. You're, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. A, I mean, Asians have straight hair. That is true. It's just a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. If but you, but because it, they don't curl, it bleach, looks like it's constantly scared. You, you should bleach your tips. <laughs> that's so good. Like that one chef guy. Guy yeah. Fury. Guy Fury. Yeah. Guy Fury. I'll, yeah. Guy, Fury, guy Fury. My day. You should do that because <laughs> yeah, yeah. mine is just a curly. I mean, it's almost like a disaster Normal. zone. No, it's not a disaster. It's like a chia pet. I mean, I'm not kidding, and it's awful. It's swampy too. You have a swampy dick. Well, not the dick itself, but like oh, the area. The dick emerges from the swamp. Right. Yeah. It's like a beautiful tree coming out of a swamp. Yes. You know, sometimes there's a beautiful it's an tree. Yeah, an oasis. It's, it's, yeah. It's like a reverse oasis. Right. Right. Yours, is, yours like... is curly uh, as well. <laughs> Well, it's you not have a you surprise. Them? It's what, what? not a surprise. No, yes, it's curly. It's not a surprise. All right, come on, don't pry too deep now. <laughs> that's it. That's all I asked. You asked. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> well, I'm you, kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, I'm no, not no, upset. No, I, I'm not upset. You're offended about? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. Ask me what my girlfriend I don't want, looks like. I don't want to. But I am kidding. Heaven, friend. Okay, good. <laughs> right. For you. It's like a flower. I'm not upset. I'm just kidding. I don't. Yeah. Don't need anything. Something. There's. There's. You know. I love vaginas. I do. And I love the way they look. They look like life comes from there. That's true. Right. It, it is true. Mm -hmm. But there are some styles I don't like. Mm. And so when I first met my girlfriend, I'm like, please don't have the styles of vagina because I liked her. And I, I would have to just accept whatever she had down there. Mm. She probably in her head thought, I don't want an E.T. dick. Mm -hmm. But she got that. She got that. Yeah, she got that. Yeah. She got fucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't like um, jazz hand vagina. What is jazz hand vagina? Where the, where the lips that? stick out like that and they do a little number. Oh, I know. Well, okay. Well, I guess I'm not asking what the, kind I you have. I'm just saying. I guess the don't. technical. What is that? No. I think what it means <laughs> is the technical game is the uh, like the vulva. Are you a doctor? There's but there's a part where da it can dangle, right? Yeah. You know, I saw a documentary about young girls in the UK who were getting surgeries to get that shit removed. Oh yeah. Oh, Pretty strange. guys like me that yes. like are yes. fucking, oh, but it's not I'm your so fault. Sorry. It's not your fault. Yes. I feel like no, it's no, no. Porn. You're right. I should never say that out loud. <laughs> whatever you have, God <laughs> ma made that, and it's good. Look, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're all got. We all got our problems. But the, the last point I want to make is <laughs> here's another thing. What, what what I don't like about the PC and things and people getting in trouble for is is that you cannot. It's like it, people are so sensitive now. Yeah. That you can't say certain things. Like, you can't be authentic. You can't be honest. There's yeah. always a filter, right? It's, I'm constantly filtering it's myself. And it's really insane. You like, just, yeah. Let's just let's be ourselves. Like let's not filter ourselves. Like sometimes you filter yourself yeah. because I refuse. You to don't call have little autism. people. Um, little people. See, that was insensitive. What yeah, I just yeah. said. I'm going to call the midgets midgets. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't. <laughs> you won't compromise on. I don't that. know. I don't well, want to compromise. Can I? On can that. I tell you about? I, I my... heard about that one day, and I was like, "Why? What's the difference? Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah." I now people are going to say, oh, you're so ignorant. No, I But it's like, I don't know, just... Here's what I, my experience was that was. I grew up my whole life, and we were calling them midgets. And there was no, there was no implication was of like, like fuck this guy, way. right? Yeah. So one day, I called a, a, someone a midget, and, they, and I get, like, blowback. And so I'm like, I didn't know what happened. The world went on without me. I missed yeah, something for, yeah. like, six months. They says they want to be called little people now. Y yeah. And I and I'm think to myself, that sounds more... That sounds more demeaning. What, you're a little guy? Yeah, yeah. To little... me, I wouldn't be one to be called you, that. Are yeah. you a little guy? Yeah. You just a little person That's there? Weird. It's like, but... like, don't call me Oriental, call me yellow people. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, yellow people would be weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, it's all, so what I was saying is it's all about the intention, right? Yeah, that's what it that's is. A, it's, it, that's and, exactly and, the point I wanted and, to make. And, and, and it's so obvious what know. someone's intention it's... is, if it's ill will yeah. or if it's just being... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the difference. Uh, uh, or if you're just being rough on the edges. Right. It's like, oh, look at that cute little midget. Or, let's hang that midget. Go. The intentions are different. Cute little midget's a little rough. <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> That's a little rough, if I'm being honest. Oh, here's my midget friend, Peter Dinklage. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to introduce him as a midget. <laughs> all right. All right. All right let me start over. Give me, another, give me another though. shot. Yeah. <laughs> um, the guy at... Uh, all right, the, the, guy, the, the guy that works at Chuck E. Cheese is a midget. What, 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 yeah, that's fine. is that better? Or which actor are you talking about? The midget. Let's yeah, say, yeah, I yeah. like the guy in Game of Thrones. Which one? The midget. Yeah, that's fine. 
It sounds weird too. But it should be fine. I, yeah, but it sounds weird. You know what? Let's but not call them that anymore. <laughs> the little, little person. The little Does person. that sound better? Uh, Who, which which portion on Game of Thrones do you like? The little person. Yeah, that that's true. Yeah, that, that sounds weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's so, stick with midget. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I guess. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, you're right. We're discovering and we're learning like, at the same time. I want to feel what it's like. Yeah, you know, we're exploring. You know, yeah. like when people, way, yeah. I just feel like the point is that you can get a little bit offended, and right. it's fine, and you can move on, and right. you, people can make fun of you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't like how you ha- you have to walk on eggs so much these days because everything could like ruin your career. Yeah, that, and that's the it, part too. That's the scary part. It's not just like you offended me, sir, and I demand an apology. Yeah. It's like you offended me. I'm going to contact and your I'm sponsors. I'm telling all my friends. I'm telling all your sponsors. I'm coming to your house. I mean, you have no idea what happened to me. I, I don't know if I, I uh, something happened to me. What happened? Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have I t- to. I'm going to say it, but I said something. I don't think that was that offensive. Mm-hmm. What was it? Uh, well, we have to know what it. Uh, all right. Say everybody, you know. Gives, yeah, but but now, okay. I and I okay. I, okay, okay. I'll tell you I, if I, I think it's offensive. All right, or not. all right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I should say it. Okay. Yeah, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't because, go because, <laughs> you know, because what happened was, I'll tell you what I, I'll just, what happened was, I was, ta- I was, do- uh, I have my own podcast. It's yeah. called yeah. Tiger Belly. Yeah. yeah. God bless you. And I did a whole episode on Asians. And we talked about all the different Asians. Then we did one episode about Mexicans. Mm. I said one thing about black people, mm. right? And then I, I got an email saying that if you, I'm going to blast you to U.S., I'll Entertainment Weekly and all these magazines if you don't give me 15 grand. Really? really? Yeah. And what, it was were they, about money. Were they in a position to do that? Who was it? Was it Some just... random person on e- email. I don't know. Huh. And then they try to extort me for money. Whoa. Right? And then all of a sudden, and in my head, because of the climate, I thought in my crazy head, should I give this person 15 grand? Whoa. Right? So that, you know. And then I showed up. I, I got a commercial. Like a pretty big commercial. And when I was sitting there, one of the, the, a lawyer or something came up to me at the commercial and said, did you say this about, right? And this what? person contacted them. Uh. It was the same person? Yes. So my point is, is that it, this whole environment the way, out there is crazy. did get you in the end? No. Okay, that's good. No. Because they, you know, people vet you, mm-hmm. right? You know, and and this adage, they vetted me. They know what I'm about, mm-hmm. and and that's scary too. Almost, it's so you scary. Can't, once you once you're like, got that one blemish, it's like vetted and out. Yeah, and it's like, no I don't know. Chances. I don't know what happened to our society. I'll give you another example. I have a bit about how I was molested by a guy with Down syndrome. I've heard it. Yeah, we've heard it. Is it a bit? It's a joke I do on stage, but it's real, right? Yeah, it's interesting that it's a that to hear you defer as a bit almost because it makes it. Well, but anyway, I did it, and and, yeah. and 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 I did it once. I was in, on the road, and some guy in the front row goes, "My son has Down syndrome." Mm-hmm. I I'm not making fun of people. I'm just saying this, this guy, guy happened to have Down syndrome, and a, who is, molested yeah. me, right? right? Right, and he's and he. Went out of his mind, mm. like my son. You know, I, I go, yeah, but he didn't molest me. <laughs> right? It, it, that'd yeah. be weird if he did, because your son is probably young, and this happened. Wouldn't even make sense. Five, yeah. Why would Why would he ago. be there? Right. Why would your son there? Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. So it's like people just get so sensitive, and and but the thing is, <sighs> I know. Yeah, what can you do? It's I don't just know. It's getting really crazy. It's weird. It's funny because Louis C.K. was like the champion of of like. And he he had this incredible ability to get on stage and say the most obscene things, but he but it would he did it. it. So he pulled it off, that... and then he started. And then he showed his dick to everyone, and now he's <laughs> gone. I can't even get into that. <laughs> <laughs> he th- was he was the he was the chosen one. He was bringing balance to the force. I know. But by the way, I that's why I really love humanity when Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais right. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Special. Special. Really good. It's all about that. Same and with Dave Chappelle's. Did really you see his good. on no. Netflix? <laughs> Great. It's about that too. Yeah, yeah he yeah, pushes yeah. it real hard. Yeah, it. It. I think that's just what it. You. you you're not an American if you can't talk. And that's and, the whole and point, push right? Your op- opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what life. I mean, that's the. It's that's, freedom. That's what American right. life is. Yeah, and you may not like what I'm saying, but it's like you know I don't. But even me, I don't get offended. You know, mm-hmm. if some you know like this guy named Andrew Santino. Right, he's a comic. Mm-hmm. He's very popular, 
And I make fun of him because he has red hair, and I think they're weird, <laughs> people with red hair. <laughs> so I also, when I bring him up on stage, in front of a packed room, I'll go, my red-headed friend, that's <laughs> weird, that, you know, they're like mutants or whatever I might say. And then he comes up on stage and does this, oh, so, 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 yeah, I'm Bobby Lee, you know what I mean? And he does that, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it crushes. I'm not offended by it because it's it's not coming from hatred. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're just having fun here, and, guys. But, yeah. and, and even if it does come from hatred. Just as long as. Well, that's yeah. not okay. That, no, that's not, that's not but okay. But it's still your freedom to say it is what I was getting at. Yes. Like, but, like, if we're going to. But if you harm somebody physically or somebody take so their different. livelihood away, that's that's not right. That you is know? so different. Yeah. You know, it's funny in a it's way. It's just weird because people choose to go after good people it's yeah. who weird. just said something. You know it's weird Like, go way. after the bad people who are doing stuff. It's weird yeah. in a way the people who actually do shitty stuff from a bad place do are the ones that get second chance. Chris Brown beat the shit out of Rihanna, and he's still fucking shaking his dick. On yeah. MTV, yeah, and selling albums, but and 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 like Mel Gibson, I mean, I don't know what's in that guy's head, but he went on a, a an actual anti-Semitic rant. Yeah, but it hurt. It, he, he'll never shake that. Mm. He won't shake it. I guess you just embrace it at that point. Yeah, I won't say that that he got off on that one. He didn't get off of it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I think that it's he used to be a, an A-list movie star. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm a yeah. huge fan of his. I think Braveheart's amazing. I love. I, love I honestly, August. I've seen that movie a thousand <laughs> times. I love. I love him. Yeah, he Apocalypse was my favorite. Is an amazing. Movie. He was actually my favorite actor. I mean, he's he's great. But <laughs> <laughs> so you're not offended that he said that. So the thing is, like, it, it's eyebrow raising, what he said. Yeah, but it's not going to fucking ruin my day. Yeah, because he's not talking to me. He's not talking about you. I don't take I don't take Jew jokes personally. I take comments about me. Sometimes I take comments personally, but not the stuff about like, oh, he's a Jew. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. more like, you know. Yeah. Good job, dude. <laughs> nice work there on that one. Yeah, because you know, you know, my, you know, my favorite Jews now. I think <laughs> I'm one of your favorite Jews. Maybe yeah. Wow. Top ten. Top ten. That's Why not? What? I that's know. good. You, I know thousands of them. I know. That's what I mean. There's everywhere. 20, Everyone, er, you throw a stone in L.A., you hit five Jews. It is weird. It is you throw a penny in L.A., five Jews Why run is to it pick though, it up. I want my reps to be Jewish. Because they're slick-ass fucking bar like mitzvah boys. My man is Jewish, and I love it. Is he bar mitzvah? She. She a bar, bat mitzvah? No, she's not active. She's not an active Jew, but she is Jewish. Hmm. But she, like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, she... I, I did this when I a long time ago. I did this commercial, and I don't know if this is I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this, but um, <laughs> they offered me seventy five thousand dollars. It was like a buyout, mm. and she got me three hundred fifty thousand dollars in a twenty four hour period. Give me your fucking and email. she just was able to do it. And I, mm-hmm. I and does that have to do with her being Jewish? A hundred percent. It comes from the Torah. <laughs> There's a secret. So, you know, most people think that we're just looking at the Torah and reading it. Yeah. But if you hold a black light up to it, there's a whole new message in there. Oh, really? I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, right. Yeah, you shouldn't live with it. You might die now. Yeah. Because I'll be found with some weird nerve agent. You're going to have to let you go. <laughs> You're fine. Mom out the mail. Listen, it's been two hours. No. Yeah. yeah. We've been on for two hours? It's been yeah. it's been a romp. It's been a riot. It's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. It's been chemistry. <laughs> I thought that, that we were like war buddies. Yeah, we've been through like a lot. Like as a platoon, <laughs> we've been and we through went a lot. through a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll see each other at those, like, PTSD meetings. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah. but it yeah. was really a pleasure to meet you. I want to ask you one question. <laughs> Go ahead. Because we ask all of our guests this, and um, first of all... if May you... I plug some things before? Yes. Oh, yeah, of course. No, I would do that right now. Gonna... Yes. Yeah. So that you give me the opportunity yeah. to do so. Of Let's, course. I want to do it. I have a podcast with my girlfriend. It's called Tiger Belly. We would love to have you guys on that as well. Yes, yeah. we're there. We'll and number there. two, I have a sitcom on Tuesday nights. Wow. It's after Roseanne. It's called Splitting Up Together. That's a good spot. And um, it's doing pretty good. So uh, check that out. Guys. Nice. So where, where can you and watch I'm it? Gonna be, when is this air of this podcast? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm going to be at the Denver Comedy Works next weekend. Cool. Ooh. I'll put, uh, is there like a nice. ticket link you can send us? We'll put it. We'll not do that. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, guys, please support Bobby Lee and all, all yeah. these, the, the podcast is great. Bobby Lee live on all my social media. Cool. There you have it. So what, are you going to ask me something, friend? So, um, if you don't have an answer, that's fine. I have answers. I, I don't have one. But it's customary that we ask our guests if they have any ghost stories or paranormal experiences. Oh, of course I do, yes. Okay. Ghost story, <laughs> UFO encounter, unexplainable shit, whatever you got. 
Well, my brother and I um, have talked about this because my brother has his own um, YouTube channel and whatnot hmm. oh. called the Stevie Weeby Show. Yeah. And my brother and I grew up in a town called Poway, California. What's going on? A shade of water, sir. Okay. I'm parched. And <laughs> we know that half of our house was on some sort of Indian burial site. That's his Because classic. my brother and I would hear... Demons, we'd he- see demons. Collectively, you would Whoa. both hear the same thing. And what my dad said later in life was, um, he'd said he said to us one day, he goes, I I don't believe in the ghost, but every time I park my car after work, I run through the hallway because I feel weird. Mm-hmm. Really? He felt but that's where my brother and, and I's bed- bedrooms were. <laughs> he just left you in <laughs> the yeah, train. So he just <laughs> left us in the fucking Running coast. past yeah, your bedroom. Yeah. But my dad would run past our our, our bedroom. You used to see your own dad running past Yeah, <laughs> because of the fact that he felt an evil presence there. Whoa. In fact, one day I thought I was possessed. And for me to get out of it, I jumped into the swimming pool. Yeah, we had a swimming pool. We, had, we, we, we did pretty good in life. Just killer. But yeah, Not good we enough were, to get an unhaunted house. Yeah, then when we moved out and it stopped. But Whoa. my brother and I were both possessed several times. We felt. How did you know you were possessed? De- because we felt a demon. Like like we would hear things, and we w- there, there were times when we would like be f- asleep and awake, and we couldn't move, mm. and we felt this presence. And it's never happened after you or jumped out of a that. window into the pool. No, no, it was we had one floor. <laughs> okay, but I would know. run out of my bedroom one time, and I fucking jumped in the swimming pool, and I got out of it. Yeah, I got out of it. Yeah, hmm. oh but God. yeah, we were. Um, th- there was some sort of evil presence. There. Have you felt anything like that since then? Well, at the comedy store, you know that that place is haunted. I haven't heard that. And I saw <laughs> Gus a couple of times. Was that a ghost that lived yeah, there? Yeah, there was a ghost named Gus. He was a, in the 50s, he was a um, mafia henchman hmm. that apparently was murdered at the comedy store. It was a club called Ciro's at the time. Hmm. And I've seen Gus a couple of times. God bless him. And that's you, something that you? people, that other people have seen there? Oh, Gus levitated Sam Kinison by his ankle and <laughs> ab- above it. Because, you know, Sam Kinison and Carl LeBeau, when they moved from Houston to the comedy store, they used to sleep in the main room. And one night, and this is what I heard from Carl LeBeau, because obviously Sam Kinison is dead, that one night he woke up and that Sam Kinison was levitated by his ankle upside what? down. Yeah. Huh? I could tell, I mean, next, if I ever do this podcast again, I can tell you a million stories that happened, <laughs> have happened there. Really? Yeah. So but when we've you, been when two you, hours deep. When you saw the ghost, just out of curiosity, how did it? <laughs> Me and my friend Johnny you? Sanchez did a gig at in Bakersfield. This is back in the nineties, mm-hmm. and I parked my truck at the Comedy Store parking lot at four in the morning. When, my, when Johnny dropped me back back off at my car, we looked up, and there's a window on the top floor. Mm. We looked up, and we saw a faceless man wearing a top hat with his hands against the window, looking Yikes. at us. And then we looked at each other, screamed. We looked back up. He was gone. Yikes. Yeah, so that's my... That's terrifying. Yeah. God bless. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> let's, let's let that sit for a minute. I thought I was done. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> With the whole podcast, right? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, it was a pleasure, man. It was great to, to sit here and chat with you. and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> so, guys... Thanks for coming. On. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Uh, I really enjoyed myself immensely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. It was really fun. Make sure to check out Bobby's stuff. We're going to put links in the description. Please support this wonderful man. Um, Next week, we've got Harley, right? From Epic Mealtime. A very nice, cool dude and a good friend. Looking forward to that. So stay tuned. And we will see you then, guys. Thanks for watching. God bless. See you then. See you then.